What's up, you fat entitled bastards? You bastards. What, what, what? What is that I hear? What? You bastards. What, what is that noise? Hello? I hear Caitlin. Hello? <laughs> What's, who's Caitlin? Hello? <laughs> Where's Caitlin? <laughs> so uh, we're going to do a, a special blowout bonanza. Uh, we are currently in Durham at uh, Caitlin's house. The ball shitty. <laughs> the bullshit. The yeah. bullshit. Yeah. You see. The bullshit. The bullshit. The bullshit. <laughs> uh, so. Oh, bullshit. Clearly. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so we'll, we'll do this real quick. Uh, so uh, we're gonna have a, a special episode. Caitlin is back for an, at least an episode, uh, and uh, we've got some. Highly fueled, charged liberalism to yes. <laughs> to yes. put on the show. Pent, pent up liberalism. I guess Antifa in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, <laughs> Quincy, I would say that you are probably the most right wing of all of us. Um, True. I would say that you are probably the most left wing. Makes sense. And I am essentially the atheist of politics. Like I don't like any of you. <laughs> so, this is so ass backwards. <laughs> the black guy's right wing. <laughs> what is it? Well, but really, I mean, I mean are we surprised by left wing? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> that's shocking. That is shocking. What a twist. What a twist. <laughs> so, uh, the customary pause for a dip as I start talking and putting something in my mouth. <laughs> so professional. I'm sorry. I'm so okay. good at it. Somebody please pick us up. <laughs> I like your train. <laughs> yep, yep, that is, uh, oh, there, it's coming right on event, coming on, yep, get to hear this every, I mean, every day, you know, I multiple would, times uh, a day. Actually, you know what, I can't say shit, because I hear it at my house all the time, just at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. Really? Yeah, no, it's it's that level. And he's like, mm-hmm. I'm like <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> bitch. Well, what's really funny about that is he's right by dorm housing. So. Oh, <laughs> yes, oh, let that So happen. as he's going right through, he's like, mm-hmm. Just for those, for those Elon kids. As I, as I like to tell my father about this. Actually, uh, they blocked off the road going over the railroad track uh, where they cut down all those kick-ass oaks. So now mm-hmm. all the ironically named things are, are now ironically named, I guess, because you have like the acorn and the oak house and all the shit where they cut down all the trees around it. <laughs> so now that shit's just all ironic. Oh, God. Bummer town. What's there? Not Let's there call anymore. it uh, pavement. And the the pavement. So uh, uh, I had to drive around the campus there, and they had this like stairwell that goes into this really sketch looking uh, alleyway. So now I affectionately call it Rape Alley, because that's got to be what it's <laughs> used for. Murder Alley. Murder. Well, they're yeah. Elon kids, so I don't think anybody's getting murdered, but I think that there is some definite bro rape going on oh, down there. God, that's the worst fucking part too. I just I don't know, whatever. College rape culture. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but all that <laughs> rape alley, all that it's all there. It's all it's lacrosse all there. and <laughs> that water polo. It's just all the worst oh, possible God. sports you can drag all from. The fucking white people sports. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Let me reclassify. We're doing a thing in this show now. Okay, starting today, okay. called "Not of My People." Okay, so you Not can of my people. You can officially <laughs> proclaim someone. From a community that you are specific to. It has to be your specific community. Okay. And you say, not of my people. Okay? <laughs> well, okay. I am a white people. guy with no money. <laughs> Those guys are not of my people. All right. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> if I had money, then I would have to say, I'd have to own that and well, accept it. Well, wouldn't, Those are not wouldn't, my that people. Be, wouldn't that be the specific, like, not of my people? You know, like, no, you I have to accept like, people that go to Walmart, okay? Like, like that middle ground, like not the worst Walmart people, but like the people who are too uh, too poor to go to Target regularly. True. So like that's my that's my group of people. Like I'm not proud of it, but those are mine. Right? I gotta own I'm that. There. Just like everybody else has to own the shitty parts of their people. I'm not a meth dealer, but probably sold pot in college. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, uh, we're starting uh, not of my people, right? And. Uh, we're going to identify something. So, recently, uh, I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to say the name of the situation because anybody who knows the situation would know exactly what we were talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I just, need to, I just need to emphasize Do what we're doing. Sleuthing. You may hear us make a very loud mooing noise. Okay. <laughs> All right. And this is directly in reference to oh, no. cuckolding. 
Oh god. Oh, so god. in a oh, in an god. instance, right, of cuckolding, right, there is two other parties. There's usually the female, right? Mm-hmm. See. And then what's the other party? The boon. The bull. <laughs> so oh. the mooing noise the is that it's so savage you are bulling the cuckle. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So that was that's interesting too because I've never really thought about like that dynamic and like the little... boo. Okay, so there's, do, there, it's called monster. the bull and yes. the cuckold is is that the right? Guy's to... not getting laid. Okay, right. Like so, the guy washing his boy. Like cause that's like His a whole thing. That's like thing. a whole fetish. Thing. Apparently, it is. It is. Uh, I can't. It's, like a whole, it's totally it's a, a whole fetish. Thing. Yeah. I don't know what kind of fetish that is. Essentially, what I identify it as is, listen, I'm gonna fuck other people and you can watch. Uh, uh, Which I I think. Uh, okay. Right, like that's, no. <laughs> I, I think that's that's how I've always thought of it. But I mean, I don't. I mean, yeah. It may, and maybe it's not a fetish. I don't know. I, I wish Day I could. Cucks. <laughs> oh, Day yeah. cucks. New. Dude, I Day told you guys. Cucks. I told you guys they retweeted one of my tweets from WrestleMania. Yeah. Right? That shit was, was so super good. Cool. I'm was super good. about that. Uh, while we're on the subject, then I guess we can get into immediately this. Uh, <laughs> so Q and I went to a WWE live show in Green Bay. Fucking so, phenomenal! So I had I'm more so fun at the live show than I did at Raw. Yes, that shit was fucking phenomenal, man. That shit was awesome. So uh, we were uh, Poppy bought the seats for my birthday, right? I mean, he didn't they were tell me. Seats. He didn't tell me what seats he got, right? So when I looked in Ticketmaster, like, because he's he's asking me, he's asking me where are we gonna be. I pull it up and I'm like. What the fuck? Because it's row five, five. as in row five ringside floor against the cameras. Like Dude, the cameras poppy. would be pointing at us. Poppy, five rows back, and it's a raw show. So not a raw show. It's a live event. So the barrier is way closer to the ring. Yeah, way closer. Like Holy shit. way closer. Like making eye contact with the wrestlers, and when we were heckling them, they, they could identify us. us by the heckles. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me be frank about this. <laughs> I told Roman Reigns he ruined the Rumble, and he heard me and looked right at me. Oh, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> so awesome. here's how it goes down: we uh, we knew that a bunch of people we knew were going, but we didn't know how many people yeah, we, we didn't knew know. would be there. Like Bray was there, and a bunch of other people, mm-hmm. right? Like, right. and we just ran into like my friends. brother. Like one of my brother's best friends was there. It was crazy. He's like my little brother. It was insane. And so we met, saw a whole bunch of people we knew. We get we get there pretty on time. Like. I figured we were gonna be like like a little bit late, like have to get through a line, whatever. We were inside the Coliseum doors. Like when they started taking tickets, we were like the twentieth or thirtieth person in. Yeah. Ooh. Like we were in quick. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what's quick, the quick. first thing we would do? Well, I imagine you gotta booze up a little bit. Yeah, we gotta find so, a beer vendor. Right, right. Beer so <laughs> we like to the beer like from the second we we looked at the merch table as it already had a bunch of people around it and teleported to the beer stand. <laughs> like, <laughs> And and we sat there for a while. We were, we were sipping beers, and then I saw a strap. It was two hundred bucks. And we literally, for about an like hour before belt. the show started, oh. we're like, "Yo, we can go half in on the strap. You can borrow it. <laughs> if I need it, I can borrow it." <laughs> just, we're I'm sorry. I'm just strap. imagining. We're thinking of all the sharing a strap on. That's fine. Whoa. No. Okay. Dark. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know. That's gonna turn. But so That's so, so please dark. explain. I'm sorry. definitely the top. A strap. <laughs> so a strap. So you. So it's a belt, like a yeah, like a championship. Belt. Belt. Yeah. So it's, it's like the the red title belt, like the the universal title is what pretty, it was. It's pretty title. cool. And uh, it was pretty dope looking. Um, and we were thinking of all the practical things we could do, like the legitimate reasons to buy this belt. What what were? Do you remember any of the reasons you came up with? Uh, uh, one was going to hook up with someone, yeah. walking in with a strap. Fair. <laughs> right. Uh, oh uh, one was fuck? we could take it to work. Uh, I mean, that's, whoever, whoever's that's right. department got the most credit cards or something like that. They got the strap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, all kinds of, stuff, all kinds yeah. of stupid stuff. <laughs> none of it, none of it made any sense. No, so that's like ultimately why we couldn't well, justify yeah. spending two hundred dollars <laughs> on a belt strap. Two hundred each, you know, for the belt. It's I mean, cool. that's where we started validating. It got dangerously close. It got I'm saying, really close. <laughs> on a mature level, thinking back on it, we were absurdly close to purchasing <laughs> this belt. Close to purchasing a belt. Unreasonably close to purchasing I, this belt. I also thought about throwing in another seventy-five and getting a money in the bank. <laughs> because there was a briefcase with money in the bank oh, on it. Like, I that's thought a missed about opportunity. it. And it was, no, it well, was, we was but it wasn't. Was it. it was, but it, it was wasn't. smart not to. So, uh, uh, 
we get uh, they're, they're tall boys so we found the tall tall boy vendor mm-hmm. right uh, mm-hmm. and because of where we are with the wwe event they don't allow bottles or cans there just for obvious reasons so we can't throw them at the wrestler because if we had them we totally we would totally have <laughs> <laughs> um uh so we go down to go check out the seats, and by the time, like, I'm geeking out this whole, the whole car ride. Right I mean, like, I'm a huge you, wrestling you not, fan, so no. I'm wearing a wrestling shirt now. <laughs> Bullet club, baby. Too sweet. Too sweet. <laughs> Biz quiz for life. So, uh, I probably drink like two or three of these things before we ever even sit down, right? I don't know. And when I tell you that the crowd, like you forget the crowd that goes to a wrestling event, right? Yeah. And we have to accept that we are that crowd. Like, so they all, they're all like us. So though. they are of your people. They are our people. <laughs> um, but like, they're all big dudes. Like, like tall, tall. large, heavy set. I like, mean, I think I saw a seven foot dude that kind of like Andre the Giant, but a black version. And he nice. was carrying that, a fucking strap. <laughs> you know we saw Jeremy's roommate. He ain't yeah. small either. He ain't small. <laughs> um, uh, he makes Quincy look tiny. Yeah, he made me look little. <laughs> That's fucking w- okay. That's wow. a, he made me so, look like a dwarf. So we go upstairs and we decide we're going to people watch, right? Because really? like it's a do. fucking wrestling event. It's a event. fucking wrestling event, so it's awesome. I'm wearing a Young Buck shirt and a Bullet Club hat. And uh, so I'm that asshole. I'm the special asshole. You're a special asshole. kind of asshole that wears <laughs> fucking Ring of Honor gear to fucking WWE. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> uh, I have people walking around like throwing me the too sweet. And, like, there, there, he wasn't the only one rocking it though, man. You, I was. You, a, there you was a couple wrestling. People. You, you could pick out the wrestling marks for sure. And we all noticed each other. Yeah. Like every time, like I walked by a guy who had a Young Bucks at versus the Hardy shirt. He saw my uh, super kicked oh, at Death shirt, oh, and we too sweeted each other. The <laughs> best <laughs> part was was that we were actually sitting behind. Like we didn't even know this dude. This dude, he looked so uppity. He had a jacket on. <laughs> uh, he had his daughter come in. His daughter had a. She had a Balor Club sign on one side, and then she had a Hugger Section sign on the other so side, right? sign. And uh, oh. we're, we're rowdy as fuck. Like, I don't care who's around us. There's a kid and his mom. There's this little girl and her, his dad. And there's these two dudes, two dudes, dudes behind us. There's two dudes in our row that's rowdy as hell, cussing, all kinds of shit. Like, we were Did crazy. not care. So this this dude is real uppity, right? He goes over to the section, right? And he like looks around. He's got his, his it's like a like a like a sweat jacket, or sweat like, jacket. Like, it's like a, a sweat those okay. North Face kind of like jacket. And he kind of like looks around for a second, and he takes his Kills shirt off. off, right? And he's wearing a Samoa Joe shirt underneath it. We're right. like, this is Mark. He's a Mark. <laughs> He's got the only Samoa Joe well, shirt in the well, house. Like, and, and the funny thing was, he didn't peel it off. Like he, like he, like Vin Balor came out. His daughter was holding up her son, and uh, I'll let him get to that part when Vin Balor comes out because that shit was pretty cool. Was super. I'll also cool. show you some videos because we have crazy videos, which you're not supposed to fucking take videos. I mean, he wasn't even quiet about it either. He's like, didn't this. give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> didn't care. <laughs> but in either way, right. but uh, he he tells her like, oh, honey, you need to put your poster down. Me, Matt, Matt patted on the shoulder was like, Bailey's getting ready to come out. She can hold her poster up all she wants to. Let her stand on the chair. Let, let her, her stand on the chair. Let her be as loud as possible. <laughs> oh so Bailey God. comes out, right? Yeah. And uh, she gets on her chair. She starts swaving the sign around. Well, Quincy and I, from behind her, start doing like, the pointing at her. pointing at the, <laughs> at the sign. And like, I was like, Bailey. <laughs> and so uh, Quincy she, screams Bailey, and she looks she over, looks, and she sees the she sign. She sees the sign. Dude. You tell it, <laughs> right, and uh, and the cool. This is probably the coolest part. I'm not not not, not joking, but it was probably the po- coolest part of the night. I think it's like Bailey the sees thing the sign, right, and she sees me pointing at it and whatnot, and she points at the girl and was like, and then gives Aww. her like one of those hug things. Aww. Cool shit ever. And so the match ends, right? The match ends, and they like to make rounds around the uh, around the barricade. Yeah. She stops at our barricade, tells everybody to do this. And throws a little girl. Wristband. So she's like parting the crowd to get this little. So she takes, she, off, so she takes off her wristband and throws it to the little girl. Oh my god! And she's in a Bailey club or a Bailey shirt. She's got oh, the sign. She has like the streamers. So like it was cool. It was oh like the collect. And we had to like sure she got it because like we were gonna go jump the people in front of her. She didn't get it. Dude, like did so she funny. get it? Did she get it? And she like holds it up and like. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. It was crazy. That was that cool. Is so hard that was one of those cool. moments cool. for like a, she couldn't have been like thirteen, but like she's gonna be a wrestling fan for life. And her favorite Dude. wrestler just threw her a piece of article of her clothing, like That's directly amazing. to her and gave her a hug. Well, and right, like yeah, just to, to part it was the the crowd. Bad. Like, hey, yes, yeah. That's it was badass. Awesome. So um, 
Gallows and Anderson come out, and I like those guys because they're uh, uh, Carl Anderson is a uh, machine gun Anderson. Okay. Uh, he's the guy who invented the Bullet Club. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. And so uh, those guys were the Bullet Club over there, but they started the Bullet Club with another guy, Finn Balor. Yeah. Also and so, known as Prince Devitt. Prince Devitt. Right. <laughs> and so as soon as their music hit, I turn around my hat, right? Because right. I always wear my hat backwards, but it's got the I'm wearing the Bullet Club hat, right? <laughs> and so uh, uh, Gallows and Anderson, they don't see anybody. They're just healing out and just doing their thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Finn Balor hits and he comes out. He's just like in high energy. It's so cool, right? And he did his little pose on like our side of the ring. I mean, this shit looks so like good. just so cool, man. So cool and so uh, the girl's got her sign up and it's got the Balor Club on it, right? Yeah. And uh, he looks over and he sees my hat, right? And I throw up a two sweet. This guy walks to the edges of the rope, looks me right in the face, and throws the two sweet back at me. Oh my god! What's it cool was, shit? It was the, the cool shit. shit. It was so cool. Because <laughs> yeah, so cool. he looks at me, he just shakes his head, yes, yes. smiles, and throws me the two <laughs> sweet. <laughs> so I mean, like that night was actually pretty cool. I was, I was like mad we didn't get like the red air from Neville, but it was. Whatever. Whatever. But you got to figure on a live show, which is weird because we did get a Swanton bomb we, out of Jeff. We did get a Swanton bomb out of Jeff. Which, by the way. We that, got a coup de gras out of Finn Balor. I called that too. Yeah, you uh, did. Uh, he said we're gonna get a coup de gras tonight. I was like, okay. <laughs> so the coup de gras is when he goes up on the top rope and he does a double leg chest stomp on the guy laying on the ground. Like Ooh. it's rough. Like it's Ooh. cool. Oh, it is pretty rough. So uh, uh, the probably the coolest match of the entire night was the first match we got. Oh yeah. And so that does for the world tag team championships. <laughs> the thing you got to know about a live show is that the title never changes hands at a live show. Yeah. So you know he's gonna win, win. Mm. but the match was, was baller. baller. So the first music to hit, right? Um, we're sitting there and shit. All of a sudden you hear, Ding! it's Enzo and Cass. Cass come out, and we lose. We lose our, our shit. shit. <laughs> and the cool part was is that Enzo and Cass's corner. We're literally in our corner. It was sick as fuck. So, two things. Enzo is way smaller than you think he is. So small. And Cass is so much bigger than you think he is. That's so... They were sitting on the the side of the ropes, and then, like, the two dudes beside us, me and Matt, we were all like, how you doing, Enzo? He looks over at us and goes, how you doing? doing?" (laughs) That shit was crazy. (laughs) So, we got to do the whole thing. It was like, my name is Enzo Amore. (laughs) And I'm a bona fide stud and a sort of fide G. And you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Big Cass. And he's seven foot tall. And you can't teach that. How you doing? <laughs> so, uh, the crowd there was amazing too, the by the way. Like, they, like, the wrestlers actually got more into it because of how good the crowd yes. was. And so, uh, yeah, uh, it's like that electrifying. Then uh, Sheamus and uh, Cesaro come out, right? They're yeah. the new tag team champions now. But uh, the they were, they put on some good. They put they did, did some good it stuff, match, man. man. Um, uh, I like that uh, Sheamus mooned the crowd several times. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, his, his, he has a kilt on, and he just lift up the kilt and like show his ass to the crowd. It was fucking hilarious. Um, and then the Hardy Boys. The Hardy and boys. when I tell you that oh, the, the entire, because the Hardy Boys the, are local. The, Har- the Hardy Boys are from North Carolina, so when Wait, the Hardy Boys is like music an hour hit, away from Greensboro. When the Hardy really? Boys music hit, the Greensboro Coliseum lost their fucking. When I tell minds. you, everybody in that stadium screaming, delete, 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 delete. <laughs> Oh, he, he went. He went totally into Broken Matt Hardy too. He's he like, yeah. He, he was yelling on the side of the ring too. He brother was yelling, Nero. brother Nero, come on, brother Nero. I was like, he just went straight broken. It was so cool, man. And the match was awesome. Um, they did so much like high risk stuff that they did a launch over the ropes and shit like that. Yeah. They did. Uh, it was so good, man. Cass um, put a foot to Sheamus's kicked face. Kicked him over the ropes. He hit him for real. <laughs> he hit him hard, man. He kicked him for real. Um, but then at the end of the match, we got uh, uh, Matt Hardy to drop the uh, twist of fate, and then, uh, and then tagged in Jeff, and Jeff did hit the Jeff Swanton, Swanton bomb. bomb. Um, when wait, I tell wait, you, they were Swanton, hit, Swanton bomb? bomb is when he gets on the top rope and he does this like leap of faith thing. Essentially, he leaps, does a front flip, but he uses his neck and shoulders to hit the guy below him. Oh, like wow. upside down. It's, it's gnarly. It's, this, is gnarly. this is the movie would do off the top of ladders and shit like that. Like he did it off the top of the uh, off the top of the cage at uh, uh, Extreme. Yes. Yeah. Um, like it was. It was a really cool match. And here's the thing too. We were so close that every time they did a hard hitting move on the ring, you could you feel could the feel vibration it. in the floor. Dude, I mean, I believe it. Oh God. So 
like especially what fifth row on the floor like you they're recognizing you y'all are like interacting with them you like feel the energy that shit sounds it was fucking super crazy. Cool. It was sick, dude. um then uh uh we had apollo cruz and kurt hawkins come out right when I tell you that my man Kurt Hawkins probably went back into the back of that ring, uh, the back stadium, and cried, we heckled, heckled the, the fuck, fuck out, out of this guy. guy. <laughs> he has this thing on. Oh, the, he has this thing on the side of his pants that says "Face the Facts." Everybody <laughs> was quiet during this match, so oh, I, I stood up and go, "Face the facts, you're trash, bro." <laughs> as soon as he says that, I go, "Muff cutter." <laughs> Oh, dude! What and, is, and he literally just like looks over and goes like, like, "What do I gotta do?" <laughs> you can't do shit, bro. Uh, just, this poor guy just looks super lame too. I feel like he's he just. He used to be wrestling. part of the Edgeheads. He was uh, he was uh, just, partners with Zack Ryder. He's real like awkward. Like I just he just looks he's like he doesn't want hair. to be a wrestler. Okay, fine. So there's a picture. He did cut his hair. He carries just like baton. Oh. Uh, can I get another beer? I'm sorry. Here's yeah, the, uh, absolutely. Beer spot. So, um, like, we we did we said some horrible things to this person, um, and uh, uh, it's kind of funny because, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Titus O'Neil came out with uh, uh, Elias Samuelson, and, uh, who is also another trash wrestler, thank you, um, and uh, what ended up happening is, uh, I guess Quincy finally got to hear where our tag team music comes from. Yeah. <laughs> Millions of dollars. <laughs> um... I still like that guy. I met him in an airport one time. He's super cool. What? Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, um, God, what was that? Uh, the cruiserweight wrestling match was trash. That shit was um, trash. I was, I was I actually was, real disappointed by that. I got to take a piss. I was uh, thoroughly pissed off about um, that. I was really excited to see Austin Aries because I've been a big mark for him for a while. And then uh, Neville I loved since NXT. So I was like really expecting like a kind of high-flying soiree, and uh, that's not what we got. Um, kind of the same in uh, Extreme Rules, too. It's just what they have no chemistry together. It just doesn't work. Um, which is important that you have people that you work with well. And I think it's just because Neville is so much more athletic and Aries is on the tail end of his career and he's just a little older, a little more beat up. Mm-hmm. And you got to figure he was in Ring of Honor and TNA for a long time, taking big risks, you know, so he's probably, you know, a little long in the tooth. Uh, I'll tell you what match wasn't disappointing that I thought was going to be. What? Uh, the women's match. Oh, that was actually a good match. Uh, and... They are way prettier in real life. Yes. Like, the TV does not do them justice. No, even don't. even my girl Nia yeah. Jax. Nia Jax was pretty cute. Mm-hmm. She oh, thick, yeah. She is thick, though. Mm, good, though. Uh, oh, but she is, she is gorgeous. Sasha Banks was gorgeous in real life. Sasha Banks still my boo, though. Bailey was hot in real life. Uh, I'll but tell you who was God, super hot, too. Shit. Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss was oh, Alexa Bliss. She's Bliss. tiny, too. Oh, she's had, a tiny bombshell. Oh! Quincy screams out. I got heckled oh by Oh, my this, God. Like, she's mom. a midget, and this mom with her, and she goes, We're the same height! The only reason is because I'm wearing and heels! And I, sh- I <laughs> shot right back, and I'm like, You are small, too! <laughs> You're so small! <laughs> Damn. No, nah, it was all good fun though. Her her husband was like, he died her husband laughing. her husband looked at her and was like, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, like but because we were so animated, we were having such a great time. The people around us started yeah. cutting loose too. Like the dad in front of us started having a lot of fun too. Like everybody around oh, us started and, getting. And like I said, it. like the, the, uh, there was a mom and her son, right? And she was a Roman Reigns fan. He had he had a John Cena stuff on. When Roman Reigns came out, I was like, he's we're, trash. We're she was gonna... like, hey. He was like, mom, no, he's trash. You're <laughs> trash, Roman Reigns. <laughs> so, so the main event is so uh, Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Right. So Bray oh, Wyatt comes out first, awesome. right? And so the thing that you do when Bray Wyatt's music hits is you turn on the flashlight to your phone and you're the stars in the night sky. Oh, and I so we're all singing the whole, crowd the whole crowd is, is doing the, the, the flashlights and they're all singing the song, Catching Flies <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. It's cool, it's cool. in his mouth. <laughs> right? So um, as soon as the music stops, right, what's cool with, uh, with Bray Wyatt is that he wasn't like really in character. So he was, because everybody was really into it, he was smiling, he was like, you know, saying what's up to the crowd, and I scream at him, Ear of Worlds! And he looks right at us and smiles and gives the heads like that. He goes, he goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, many people, so many people were doing it in the crowd, he was just like... <laughs> like it was, he he's, he's fatter than he looks, he on, TV, than he looks on TV. He is fatter than he But it's amazing how athletic he is for being so big, man. Um, and then uh, Roman Reigns hits, and we boo the fuck, fuck out. Everybody him. booed Roman. So like, it as, was a mixed year, as soon was, as uh, as soon as the crowd quieted, quieted down a little bit, I screamed out, "Boo!" 
Screw this man! <laughs> <It's> like, <"Boo." laughs> that, that just got me even more hype. And so that's when Quincy up. loses his fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my mind. And my friend, my friend was he was like he was in like section A. He was standing up talking shit to him too. And <laughs> they could hear him talking shit to him. I was talking straight shit. The whole, everybody oh was sitting God. down at this point. He was out of his mind, like standing up, flipping so, them off, getting his attention, so wait, 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 <laughs> trying so, to start so a Quincy, fight. Quincy, Quincy. <laughs> Everyone else is seated. They're just enjoying Oh, I'm being serious. You're, I am standing up. You are standing up, up screaming. I am standing so up. Four of Quincy flipping off the him in the middle of the ring. We, had, we had an employee at the event that sat behind us. He said, dude, I saw you talking shit to Roman Reigns. I was like, no, I was in Roman did, Reigns. Did Roman Reigns hear you? Yes. Oh, he was. Oh, he heard, I he heard heard everywhere. because he was about to get his ass kicked. Because <laughs> that dude is not small. No, he's, very, he's really not small. What? What is? I'm gonna look this up. What is Roman Reigns? Have? Google him right Google now. Google Roman Reigns. Well, because I, I know what he looks like. He's a big fucking Samoan. I I would oh fuck that's totally different than who I thought. Yeah, he's six three. I mean, you're you're a little bit taller by an inch, but way, yeah, but he's, he's not, way no, more jacked. Quincy, that's one motherfucker. Man, that motherfucker would have grabbed me by my balls and like threw me out. In the Quincy ring. gets his attention right. And he looks right at him, and he's like, look at him like, what the fuck, dude? And he goes, you ruined the rumble. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, come on, man. Okay, so for whatever reason, I thought Roman Reigns was, ah, who's the dude? So I feel like I'm describing like a number of different wrestlers right now. Oh, uh, Roman he's, Reigns hates me for the rest of his life. He's smaller. <laughs> he has like black hair on one side. Seth Rollins. Seth, Seth, what is it? Seth Rollins. We're, you're talking we're about. That's why. That's why I thought. So. That's why I he thought you were talking. Because yeah, this this little candy ass motherfucker, like Seth Rollins, was could, amazing. It was what amazing. really? In real life, it was awesome. Okay, um, okay. So uh, then the match gets interrupted because uh, Samoa Joe comes out, and we all like because the dude in front of us remembers he's, he's wearing Joe a Samoa right? Joe shirt, right? Um, and uh, we're huge Samoa Joe fans. Yes. And so as soon as his music, dun, 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 we're like, Joe's gonna kill you. The only <laughs> section that's doing it. And we started, and the dad got all excited, and he's like, Joe's gonna. We accidentally left him hanging on one of them. He's like, Joe's gonna. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, he was into We're it. like, sorry, bro. <laughs> um, awesome. And then uh, uh, Seth Rollins comes out, and uh, it was great, man. Um, and then the match ended, and everybody kind of hung out for a second, and I took this opportunity to take my drunk ass to go take a piss because. I had drinking essentially twelve tall boys during this operation and uh, yeah. was pretty jacked. Yeah, that was a dope night. It was dope. <laughs> favorite part of the night? My favorite part of the night? Yeah, definitely talking shit to Roman Reigns. <laughs> shit was awesome. That man is much bigger than I thought uh, he was. Even just mental perception, like uh, I can't even imagine how big he's. Also, Quincy, are you playing with a cat toy right now? Is that what's happening? I here? am playing with Simple cat toys. Get it? You- <laughs> yeah. um, mine was definitely getting too sweeted by uh, Finn, Finn Balor. Finn that was like a. That's like a huge like. Like life moment, I'm never gonna forget. I'm that. sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, let me take that like, back. Direct like, acknowledgement. Getting, getting that girl direct acknowledgement by Bailey was probably the favorite part. Of I mean, that's, that was that super gave me cool. Some I'm, I'm actually like, like just, really proud of that. Like, I had that goosebumps cool. just like hearing y'all describe that. I was like, wow, that's pretty beautiful. Like, you, like going there, you don't think that kind of shit's gonna happen, but that shit happened. That shit was cool. And I can't help but help uh, think that our direct intervention with that dad ended up being as a matter of fact why she got that band. Matt had been talking about going to ROH. And we didn't talk about it at all at that wrestling match. He turned to us and said, you guys going to ROH in Charlotte? The dad. What? Dude. <laughs> he was Mark, man. He was Mark. He was, uh, because we had, like, everybody around us, we, we all clicked, like, had so much fun, like, just interacting with you. It was probably the most fun I've ever had. The dude and his had. dad besides you was cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah, they were kind of yelling with us and heckling and shit. His dad was cracking the fuck up when I was fucking talking shit. He was everything we were doing, they were losing their shit. Like, the people around us could not believe the shit we were doing. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like an average day with the two, though. Like, unfortunately. We should never. We we were on 1,000, dude. It was crazy. (laughs) We should never be allowed that close to professional athletes. You should not leave the house. This is why we can't have nice things. I'm just glad you weren't in the first row. I probably would have asked what for real. I would have taken a swing at Kurt Hawkins. I would have been like, take a reach over and hit him. Like, quit wrestling, you're terrible. Roman Reigns probably would have hopped out of the ring. He probably would have gotten in my face. That would have been awesome, though. You, would have, no, what you were too fun? drunk, you would have hit him. Oh, what up? You would have smacked him, yeah. <laughs> you were, I had to calm him down. I had to rib him like six times to get him like, God, fucking stop it. I'm cool with that bit if I just mush Roman Reigns. <laughs> 
I don't. I don't. Think I don't. Yeah. No. It probably would have been a little different. I probably would have gotten mushed. Would've, I was drunk as shit. He would have given you that Superman punch, <sighs> and then he would have turned to me, and I would have gotten a spear just by proxy from the top room. <laughs> That shit would have been so funny. Would have been so <laughs> shit. It would have sucked so bad. Uh, you watched Extreme Rules, right? Yeah, I did. That that paper was trash. Uh, just... what, what I mean, like this, ba- yeah? Bailey took this ass whooping by this kendo stick, and so, I'm mean, just coming off of a super whooping. big high with that with that yeah. event, right? Like I was stoked for this actually. Like, I, I, like we like we were stoked for that because we had just saw these dudes like a week ago. And it's in Chi Town, and Chi Town is kind of trash. No, it was in for, Maryland. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was in Chicago. No, nah, it was in Baltimore, Maryland. Well, Baltimore sucks. Because <laughs> that crowd yeah, that is trash. Was trash. So, um, so uh, the cage match for the tag team titles was pretty cool. Um, I don't hate Cesaro and Sheamus, so I'm kind of okay with them winning. Uh, plus, it comes right up. The reason they lost it was because Matt Hardy's kid's about to be born, so they had to take the strap off him because he'd been gone for a couple weeks. Um, then... Uh, I was hoping they were gonna like come back broken for it or something. The like main that. event's really good. The main event was really good. Uh, it was Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe, Bray Wyatt, and, and Extreme Rules match. And who am I missing? Balor, Finn Balor. Balor yeah. Balor. Um, it was great, man. No, there was, that was a bunch awesome, of... We got a we got a spear out of that. We got a Superman punch. Here's the part that pissed we got me off. Coup de and Samoa Joe put somebody to sleep. <laughs> so I would have been super happy with Samoa Joe winning because Samoa Joe wins and nobody saw that coming. No, Except me, no. I did. I'll I didn't tell you why it. I saw it. <laughs> I didn't see I, that coming. I saw it. I, saw I didn't see it coming. I thought Finn Balor was going to win it the whole time. I thought the event, the second playing of the event, was going to start at eleven and not eleven thirty. So oh. I tuned in and I only got a second view, but I saw Samoa Joe talking, and I'm like, "Son of a bitch, he won the main event." <sighs> And here's the other thing, Raw too. Top ruin it for you? Yeah. I yeah. logged into it again because I thought it was starting again. And uh, the fucking Seamus, they're like, and you thought the steel cage would have been in the Hardy's favor. I'm like, son of a bitch. Oh, right? Just ruining all of that. They're ruining all of it. Um, the rest of the event was garbage. Just trash. Elias Samuelson with the fucking the plane in the ring, and that was terrible. The Dean Ambrose, the Miz match was stupid. It, like, it was, it's called Extreme Rules, and that's. That's Dean Ambrose's shit. You know and what I'm saying? Do and they didn't do anything nothing. Extreme. They did this whole, if he gets disqualified, he loses the belt. I was like, this is so fucking dumb. That's extreme rules. Like, like you can't, like, the, the thing is that you can't do anything extreme or you'll lose the belt. Like, how's, is that just supposed to be ironic fun or it's just not fun at all? Yeah, I think it's not fun at all. Sounds like, miserable. Not fun at all. This is like, it defeats the purpose. Don't, I mean, don't. I'm still like, yeah, it does defeat the pur- new well, to this, like, It defeats the purpose of Dean Ambrose's character anyway. Well, right, just like any of these characters. You know, it's like the whole, it's the whole thing. Ugh. I tried. <laughs> and then there was a kendo stick and a pole match. Oh my god, what a horrendous and match. It was so bad. Uh, like, they squash matched Bailey. They shit Bailey. They, 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 literally, the they literally beat her up with a kendo stick the entire match. Kind of Even though it was kind of funny watching Alexa Bliss with this fucking kendo stick. No, I, I saw pictures is. from this when she I, when I Googled hot. Bailey. She was super hot. But, uh, but they fucking they squashed Bailey. I don't have any idea why they did that. That's, yeah, look at. It. I mean, are they squashing Bailey or? Yeah, they squash. I mean, that was a squash match. That's what that was. Mm. Alexa Bliss. She think she'll go to SmackDown kind of stick any day? But. Uh, no, SmackDown's doing a much better job with their roster. But uh, no, the, maybe the reason they moved Charlotte to SmackDown was because of Bailey. I Charlotte Flair was good. Woo! I mean, they. they I saw her new photos smashed. from the Fappening. And uh, couldn't be less attracted to her now. Who? Charlotte's. I'm sure she's so beautiful. Uh, she's five foot ten. Damn, she's. You that's... might, you might need to take a look at those photos and uh, be a judge maybe. for yourself because there are some maybe. awkward body proportions there. You, you know what? That's beast. okay though. That's, <laughs> okay, though. that's, <laughs> that's all right. She's you know got what? the roast beast you know behind what? between it's her all... legs. <laughs> I think he even took the roast beast. <laughs> His fuck. dick shrunk three sizes that day. <laughs> Y'all are so bad. <laughs> Roast beach. <laughs> Do you have the four-hour issue with your Cialis? Look at this photo. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> You'll never get hard again. You know Take Stop a it. look Stop at the Roast Beast. Everyone's got, everyone's junk looks different. Why don't you look up shapes, a picture of Alexa Bliss? Sizes. I did. I She's all right, but I like Charlotte Flair a little bit more, I think. 
Alexa Bliss looks like she'd be a porn star, which is okay. Oh, that's not my Maybe that's what the attraction is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm well. Oh my god! <laughs> Help me. Are you sure you're Bailey, okay? Bailey was cute. I like Bailey. Bailey's hot. Yeah. yeah. It sucks that she got whipped with her the Her ass is bigger in person now. Jeez. Mm. Mm. Bubble mm. butt. Let it happen. Bubble butt. Bubble butt. <laughs> she's, according to, to the Googles, she's only like, she's like my height, but like, 30 pounds Oh, less. my God. She's, like, like, your height, but her fucking, like, legs but that's, are, but like... But it's crazy, though, because she's 30 pounds less. Oh, she's got and, some... Like, she's got... Homegirl's got some like, muscle like, time. Oh, it's yeah. all tits and ass. Oh, it is. Like, homegirl's got muscle time. And she, like, does, like, not she, does a, she does hard work trying to keep those things hidden, um, but they are gigantic. Mm. They're amazing looking. I believe it. I mean, she's yeah, crazy. she seems... But she's the only one that's smart, so you'll, like, never find her on a fapping page or anything Oof. like that. Yeah. Like, and she's I'm, like, I'm actually kind of proud of her. And like, she's, you know, like, and she's, yeah, and she's it, Finn Balor's girlfriend. Not anymore. Oh, they broke up? Uh, apparently they're never together. Uh, you know who he is banging? What? Take, uh, what's the, what is the wildest, most attractive chick on any of those shows? Hold up. Because you're thinking in the wrong place already, I can tell. Is he? Who? Who's the chick? Who? That was in the triple. That was in the tag team. No, she's Cassie not a wrestler. Kelly? Oh, she's Kelly? not a wrestler. No, I don't know. You know that super hot Spanish chick from the uh, does the interviews? That's his girlfriend. What's her name? Bay, our Bay, like the chick who's so amazingly that, attracted. That that's chick, his girlfriend. That chick. That chick. How did? Because now I'm I'm consulting the internet here and. Uh, oh my bad. I'm sorry. I just gotta say this. Going to that event, you know the chick that comes out in Raw. And not on SmackDown, but on Raw. And she's like, and this match is for one fall. Right? Amazing. That chick gets no play on TV. She's hotter than most of the divas. Her ass is in, in practically proportion. Well, just ridiculous. Do you know her name? Because I just want to. I don't even know her name. I don't care. Just Shit. what? <laughs> I was like, like that's like, like, she comes out and we're just like, who the fuck is, is that? that? <laughs> and then she starts talking and we're like, that's who that is. Like, have my children, children, please. Please have them, please. Please. You know you never want to have happy children? Who? Roast beach. <laughs> <laughs> West Virginia Mountain Race. Oh, no. You know, what, you know. what is it? What is it? West Virginia Oh, Mountain? man. So, uh, we went forward with Ryan for my homeboy's uh, bachelor party thing. And fucking, like... <laughs> you can go to this gas station because everything's like ATV friendly. Roger, ATV around the gas station. That's the most West Virginia thing West I've ever heard. West Virginia. Oh, Virginia. <laughs> it's so West Virginia, right? Wait, it's all West Virginia. Like, I didn't, I didn't uh, know ATV friendly so, was like a turn so we're joking. Room. So we're joking the whole way up there. And we're like, oh, dude, we're going to get some girl to beg you from like West Virginia. She ain't got no teeth. She's probably a meth head. Whatever. We're walking to the <laughs> whatever, gas station. Whatever, whatever. Mind <laughs> you. <laughs> mind you. Mind you. <laughs> This gas station is mm. called the Crazy Horse Two. <laughs> I, God damn it! it? <laughs> so they, yes, yes. Oh, it was called the yeah. Crazy Horse Two. The West Virginia Strip Club slash gas station <laughs> slash Tiger Care Center. Yes, that's hot dogs in town. The Crazy <laughs> Horse Two. They got a buffet. Oh, no, 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 they got a buffet for sure. No, 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 no. no. Didn't have a buffet, but uh, what they did have was Hunt's, Bro- Hunt's Brothers Pizza, which is just as country. What? The <laughs> What Hunt Brothers Pizza. Fuck. Is that like the one where they're like there's one like sad Hispanic guy in the back who No, no, it was actually it was like, like puts it in a it was actually, actually it out of the freezer. It was actually like, like the, the old like, it, was like, it was actually like the old like grandma white lady that can actually make really good like breakfast biscuits in the morning. That I just imagine that they just put they put it in tin foil and they slide it under the heat lamp and there it stays till it sells. <laughs> no, nah, it could no. sell in ten minutes or it could sell in thirty days. They actually they actually make it fresh, it's not a joke, but either way, fuck that. So we walk into the gas to station. The we walk to the gas station. Everything I just described about a West Virginia mountain shit just comes out behind the counter. I'm like, oh my god, no. <laughs> Hey, Daddy. Yeah, please, please describe <laughs> what. Hey girl, y'all going ride mud holes tonight? <laughs> I was like, the mud holes. <laughs> we not riding no mud holes with you, bitch. <laughs> hey, da- hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. You gonna, hey, run, daddy. You gonna <laughs> run in the mud holes today? I can't imagine no, the, it was so funny. the human petri dish. <laughs> <laughs> that is a chick from the hills of West Virginia. I'm telling you, like, I mean, honestly, 
the Petri dish would be West Virginia, right? And it's just breeding all of whatever's taking place in the mountains of West Virginia. I mean, like, they got to do something. So, like, so they so they there's, no, there's no way she can have kids, right? Um, because uh, the, the the syphilis that is raging through her system. Oh, poor, oh, poor wow. baby, poor baby. Oh, oh my God. That is <laughs> bummer Damn down. Man. So have you ever seen The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia? Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. What a documentary. If you haven't seen it, go fucking watch that shit. Oh, my name's Billy Joe, <laughs> and I'm the hot one. Really? <laughs> that is exactly what you get. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I'm telling you, the beginning of this thing starts out with this kid, uh, and it's it's the kid, the uncle, and then like the DA, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so the kid's like kind of giving his side of the story, sheriff. and the DA is talking yeah. around, it's like, uh, it's like kids like, yeah. So I was, uh, my dad had died, and my uncle called up and said that he was gonna bury me inside of my cold dead daddy. So, and then it blitzed over the guy. <laughs> he stole a car and drove to the gentleman's house. <laughs> Yeah, and then he uh, wanted to get all that crazy. Uh, he stole a shotgun and shot the man in the face three times. <laughs> that guy lives, right? <laughs> and pulls his face back over his mouth so he can talk to his wife, right? And then the kid drives off and has a 24-hour shootout with the cops, right? Yeah. And this is like the, right, the right. before the even the entrance music for this thing hits, right? Like it's like the prologue to it. And he goes, "Yeah, I think the judge really likes me. I think they're gonna let me off uh, easy." And and I'm just sitting there like, oh my god. <laughs> That's what I learned about the West Virginia mating call. Uh, they just shake a bottle of Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing, though. The drug dependency there is fucking out the wall. It's Nobody insane. works. Like, yeah, no, it's like no one does anything. Like, they all just take drugs. They all make drugs, maybe. I don't I don't know I can't imagine what, the, what probably... the workflow there is, but oh holy shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, they, 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 they take the coal mines away, and the whole fucking state goes to shit. How about the chick who gets out of prison, right? Oh, I'm just and then, imagine. And then they, uh, they go to find her husband, right? They pull him out of his girlfriend's house, and then she essentially rapes him in the back of his car. Mad He's like, no, I ain't trying to give you no dick, but you can give me some dick today. <laughs> like, Mad fuck. Oh, my God. Mad Apparently, they got married in the, the fucking pharmacy of a CVS. What? <laughs> I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Holy shit. This is where we got married. Holy shit. Get this is... Xanax prescription filled. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, the, and... No, I think I think that for me was what the most shocking called? because the, the wild, wild and whites. wonderful whites yeah. of West Virginia. So so it follows the white this family. family. Yeah, the white family of you know obviously West Jessica Virginia. Jessica White, the last mountain tap dancer. <laughs> 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 That's a thing. So it's fascinating. I was not expecting the kind right. of drug dependency that like was depicted in this. You must document. not know about West Virginia. So though. so I didn't like going into it. I was like, okay, maybe meth, maybe whatever. But like like these like. Like Xanax and like Ativan and all of the yeah, Oxy's Oxy like a big fight. Like yeah. that's just wild. That blew my mind. I don't know. Now I know. But um, my favorite one was talking about Jessica White and uh, uh, when he went to jail for hitting his wife. Mm. Um, and he's talking about he's like I've been huffing gasoline all day. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, no, it's like, like the shit that they're and involved in. And the reason in. he kicked his wife's ass was because he made she made the eggs runny. That's I mean, why he went to jail for like eight un- years. Unfortunately, because he kicked his wife's ass because the eggs were runny. I don't yeah, like runny just, eggs. Just go white. She'll make those eggs runny again. I'd have whooped her ass. He's, and... the, he's the dancing outlaw, as he's called. Is he still alive? Uh, yeah, age sixty. That's fucking. I he's have no idea. He's in Brandytown, West Virginia. I have no idea. The how mountain he's alive. dancer and show Quincy a picture of this guy. So, <laughs> so first of all, he's uh in some sort of Elvis get up with his hand what tattoos. The so. F- so this is Jesco, Jesco White, the dancing On outlaw. On his back is a tattoo of Elvis Presley and Charles Manson. Cause sometimes you're gonna get the Elvis, and sometimes it just go fucking crazy. Dude, that's fucking right. No, I remember and that. And he did like his face like flipped like <laughs> serial killer. They're so like, no, that shit. level of just what like what the, the fuck? fuck? Yeah, it's no, this amazing. dude. This dude. You know who see. made that movie? Who? I Jack thought it was a jackass. jackass. Yeah, it's the, it's the same like folks. Like Knoxville and uh, what's yeah. his face, Jeff this, this motherfucker, he's real fucking weird. Who the fuck is that? That's Jessica, Jessica White. White. This is Jessica White, the last mountain dancer. <laughs> last mountain tap dancer. No, yeah, yeah. It's tap dancing. Right, he taps, yeah. taps, taps to his shoes and fucking tap dances. Did he tap dance on his wife's face? So like, this, is, this is another... He... he 
I feel like he just looks different in every fucking picture. I'm always just... Well, like, I mean, my man, because I just, like... He huffs gasoline all day. And then, <laughs> and then right, when the, like, their mother was, it was their mother's birthday, so like fucking smoking pot and drinking boo- booze and like fucking huffing gas and shit yeah. like that in her house. She's like, I, I don't like that. I, I don't like them. Just get <laughs> torn up. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And not one of them works. They all collect government crazy checks, quote, quote. And they, <laughs> right, that's, what they, that's how they classify them. They, they sell drugs. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is, uh, well, it's not funny at all, but... The DA was talking, and the sheriff were talking, like, you know, if you were to remove the whites from West Virginia, like, that that county's crime rate would go down, like, 50%. A whole family. And granted, I can't remember how many folks are There's like associated 30 of them. with it, but yeah, it's... 30 or 40 of them. But, and, and, you know, I'm county in... Yeah, dumbfounded right now. I didn't even know. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good... I don't know if it's, it's still on Netflix. Parts hilarious. Right, right, right. Super sad. Like, it's, with the kid and his yeah. mom and shit, like, that was super sad. Dude, just, um, just, even, like, the family relations and, like, just how they, um, yeah, it's, they, they've it's, accepted, it's like a, it's a, a mentality where they, yeah, they're just like, yeah, we just sell drugs. Like, they don't, I don't know, they're, like, complacent. They don't have Like, to they're work. chill. Like, they're, they're literally okay leeching the system. Like, that's the only time where I'm like, that's how you manipulate the system right, to, right. Like, to never just, have to work. Right, right. Like, they just, they just don't people. give a shit. I don't know. Uh, At least wow. that's how it was portrayed in that documentary, which wow. was super interesting. Kind of like watching a train wreck. It was on Netflix. It is a while. train wreck. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. I don't was, think it's on Netflix anymore. Which is a bummer because yeah, that's that's where I watched it. Watch that. You, that was that was when I was still at school in Boone, and I was all like, oh, the you fire know, stick. I'm people. <laughs> like, all hell the fire stick. <laughs> I don't know if you'll find it on the fire stick. To be honest, I'll be able to find it. We'll find it. Fucking Cody. I'll find it. <laughs> Throwback to when everyone comes in buying fucking still dirty. Do. <laughs> no, they still do, dude. <laughs> I that's believe not, it. That's not, that's not, that hasn't stopped. I'm going to put Cody on the fire stick, y'all. Mm. My favorite is when they get upset that we only sell them two per day. You Wait, yeah, like two per person per day? Two for day? three. They went down to two from three. Okay, so well, so there was, there was a time, though, where we didn't have a limit on it, and people would come in and buy, like, ten at a time. Do you remember yeah, that? And that was, time. yeah, no, that makes sense. But since the limit's gone on, we haven't run out. That's, that's good, because we we're always fucking Because it's a huge hassle to drive every day to Best Buy to buy two fire sticks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can't sell that shit for 70 bucks. If you buy that shit online for 70 bucks, here's, first of all, if you buy one from online because it's cracked, you're a fucking moron. Right? Uh, you're just a fucking well, retard. Like, they were going I, for 130 at, bucks at one point. I look stupid. at the people, though, who come in and think they're going to, like, flip this and turn this into, like, a profit, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, like, you must I'm be dealing like, with even dumber like, people. Do you know... Do you know, like, I can do the same thing you're about to do in ten five minutes. minutes? Not even ten. I'm talking ten about five. that and Exodus and any other person you want to download. You do it in ten shit. minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. It's like, well, do I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. I'm like, uh, if mess you mess it up, up, then you just put the repository back in correctly. You don't <laughs> have to delete the old one. You just put the new one in correctly. No, you can't mess it up. It's impossible. That's I'm just waiting for those cease and desist letters from Time Warner to start popping up. <laughs> You're not downloading anything. You're streaming it. Still, we're not gonna get any cease and desist letters from Time Warner. Hmm. I don't know. How would that work though? So how would they? They would track that activity and be like, "Oh, we're." They can't track that activity because half. I'm sorry. All their customers. (laughs) So let me get this straight. You think that an agency can't track? Your internet activity? Especially Hold the ones on. wait who a second. I'm sorry. provide it Hold and on. mark it up like 300 fucking uh, percent. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. How long has this fiasco been going on? Two, how long years? Did, how long were you able to use oh, like wait. Napster and LimeWire before it was illegal? Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait. Wait. LimeWire wait. computer wait. aids. I'll, I'll, go, computer I'll take you, I'll a take you one further. <laughs> I'll take you one further. These new batches, you weren't even supposed to put, be able to put Cody on. If, huh. Lies. <laughs> well, obviously, because you get—I mean, with, with enough Android persistence, right, right, right. <laughs> with with the know-how and enough persistence, especially for shit like made for mass consumption, like you, there is a way to break past it. This, um, I don't know. I'm, I am interested though. I mean, they're gonna track that shit. That's just how it works. That's how. Let it them works. track it. It is what it is. Who cares? Well, so that's where. Yeah, we'll so you can, you can set exactly. up a VPN. I mean, like, there's always a way to do it. Private uh, okay. network. Like, so yeah. you're not using, using a VPN to begin with. You're yeah. kind of. Yeah, no, it's like real sketch. So we were using internet aids for the longest time with Napster, LimeWire, FrostWire, what the fuck ever. Mm, Frost I, mean, I still got I still got loads of shit on a fucking hard drive. I mean, like seriously. It's FrostWire. What are they doing? <laughs> it's LimeWire. FrostWire is LimeWire. They just changed the name. 
cloud downloader, <laughs> BitTorrent client, media player. They just changed the name. Oh, they, have, mean, a, like, they have a Google. Or a, nobody yeah, uses it anymore because of Cody, though. Yeah, who would need it? What? BitTorrent? Yeah, because all the shit Frost that they're streaming, Warren. all those movies that they are streaming are the same files that you would download yeah. from there. Yeah. They're just streaming it. I just need to get a fucking decent copy of Lego Batman. I just I, I can't understand why we don't have it. All right. Shout out to all of our listeners. We need to get Matt a copy of Lego, Lego Batman. Batman. Please, someone be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Right. You go the to your exodus, hit movies, so and people yeah. watching. Be on, be on the lookout. Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for that good copy of Lego Batman. <laughs> Can you get a beer? Oh yeah, please and thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna put some more in the. Can I? Uh, no, you sure. can't. Yeah. No. 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 Cause I'm out here on the street. <laughs> <laughs> what is that a reference to, Matt? Uh, froggy fresh. Froggy fresh. <laughs> so good. There's some street rangers. So if you remember from a little while back, there was that. Uh, that I got, I'm saying a rapper loosely. <laughs> rapper. <laughs> Krispy Kreme, who had to stop <laughs> using the name because Krispy Kreme, like, sued him. Oh, Jesus. Poor <laughs> boy. So, so, uh, and he really is dumb. Um, but the music videos are absolutely awesome. Why is James crying? Because he just got dunked on. No. Uh-huh. Street Rangers. Thank you. Thank you, you man. Like the new belt? Street Rangers. That's a shit that's so funny. Um, what about, uh, I mean, if we're talking about West Virginia Mountain Horse, we could probably talk about uh, our locals, which mm. are these skeleton hillbilly girls. Ooh, yes. Um, what is it lordy, lordy. about girls from, like, the country area here that they're, like, 10 pounds and skeleton-like? So what? <laughs> My savagery no knows no bounds. no bounds. So so the thing I feel is that like I mean like from the I amount like, unfortunately it's probably rooted in like eating disorders. I don't think it is because these girls nah. hound down some Chick Fil A nah. and shit like that. Nah, they with can. the amount of I mean, calories maybe I don't know we're talking about. Then they can eat whole pizzas and not gain a fucking pound. Here's my thing: with the amount of uh, of, of, the, of calories, whiskey, and dick these girls chug down, they should be way better. <laughs> you say calories, whiskey, and dick? What a cocktail! Right. I'm not wrong. <laughs> oh, I thought you said gin. No, you, you said, said dick. whiskey dick. and dick. <laughs> not coming out of here. It's, no, 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 no. It's the staple of every hillbilly skeleton girl's diet. So, so I'm curious too because I'm having a hard time imagining these folks, and I haven't like, I don't know. I'm not. I don't. I don't know who these people are because I feel like there are not these people, and I'm. I need a documentary. Is what I'm saying to both. I need you guys to make a documentary. I mean, it's Basically. the found, it's the foundations of their everyday life. Well, no, no, I need a documentary about, because, like, I'm trying Wake to up think in the of morning. a fucking skeleton building. Oh, <laughs> Feeling like P. Diddy. P. Diddy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, the average skeleton hillbilly girl is about 90 pounds okay. to 100 pounds. So, so can I can, actually, I can think of one person, one entire person in our circle of people. We know a few. <laughs> But that's about, I mean, that's about... Um, they're still sweet, though. Super though. skinny. Right, right, right. But it's, you know, it's a whole... Or, elbows or they're and not meat. sweet. Or they're Did not sweet. Did you say sweet. knobby elbows and meat? Because they got no meat. No, they got... There's no, there's no meat. There's no a meat. A definitive there. thigh gap because their thighs can't touch because they're literally just femurs. Right. <laughs> Right, right, right. Looking like a um, cosplay. Which, like, there's no shape. No, whoa, 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 whoa. That's mad fun. Hold on, first of all, first of all, last time I checked, we're the fat and title bastards. Don't give a fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We don't give a fuck. (laughs) You fuckers. So, uh, (laughs) they have uh, scraggly, broken hair. They do. Because Uh, their body doesn't have enough nutrients to promote healthy hair. Um, And, uh,. Uh, their teeth are yellow and they definitely smoke. Oh, they well, and, and that might that might be the answer to the, the and question. And here is here is the biggest identifying feature of the um, Hillbilly Skeleton Girl. They always wear a specific type of makeup. Oh, go on. Off-colored eyeshadows, like pink or blue or purple, and not subtle either, like okay. raccoon eyes, like bright blue. You're done, dude. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. I, that that sounds about right. This is helping. And me a actually. lipstick that does not match. Oh no, it never matches. It never matches. Jesus Christ, you're an asshole. <laughs> no, it's always you're the eyebrows too. Asshole. The eyebrows, I think, are a dead giveaway. Oh my god. They fuck, they've overplucked, and that's where I'm always oh, like, okay. My. So you know what I'm yeah. getting now? Yeah, no, no, no. I, oh, I, another, I'm not yeah. seeing. Another identifying feature is that they'll have some trash. Got this done in your boyfriend's friend's house tattoos. Oh my god! Always, 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 always. And and they probably no, still. He is not. Wait, dude. why? What? Wait, why? <laughs> This is this is the I'm describing this is the a specific skeleton. person. <laughs> this is the skeleton oh hillbilly god, girl. This is so I'm bad. just now finally picking like, up like, on like, it. Like, oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't indulge in this. I can't, I can't. Why not? I'm so What's sorry. Wrong? I'm so sorry. I can't. It's not. It's not I of can't. our people. I can't. <laughs> it's like and, uh, it might not be of your people. <laughs> and they use uh, too much foundation to cover up meth scarring. Oh no, meth scarring. Oh fuck. Okay, so this is a very advanced skeleton hill. No, 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 that's the standard. Why is my best friend a dick? <laughs> why, so, why is he such you, a you dick? Hold on, Quincy, I, I've got a question for you. Oh, don't, no, no. Please Are don't. Are you ask. trying to get with the skeleton hill? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. Not even roast beast. Just look out for all oh, that foundation. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Do you I'm have sorry. any idea as to who <laughs> you'll date? <laughs> oh, my God. No. 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 Absolutely not. Are you sure? Are you sure about I'm that? Because I'm getting the impression that Quincy is really interested in a skeleton. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Caitlin. It's okay. I, hey, you know what? You love who you love, Quincy. <laughs> like, it's all right. Caitlin, <laughs> this girl is so skinny. Like it would be assault. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> it would be assault. You would see your it, dick. It would be fucking assault. It's it would like be alien. assault. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally the alien. It should be like. No, you see like the whole thing. Like, yeah, just just dumb, dude. <laughs> Oh, that, I shouldn't be laughing at that. I should go I'm in sorry. and be like in her throat. <laughs> she like. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Forgive. Forgive me. <laughs> I'm not laughing. That's right. That's, that's was, bad fuck. I'm not just, laughing at that. It'll be so bad. Oh, man. <laughs> Please stop. We gotta give me an arm. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So, oh, no skeleton hillbilly girls. Quincy no. Would be assault. No, it should uh, be assault. <laughs> and I would definitely go to jail. <laughs> oh. Ma'am, how'd you get this weird bruising in your esophagus? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw the it three sizes that day. Like, like, <laughs> like, like they'd use a rape kit. No, and just, they'd have to use no, it over, over okay, the whole no, body. It would no, just be done. No, it would just fuck. be done. It would just be done. Oh, oh my god. Alright, I'm an asshole. <laughs> it would just be done. Oh, jeez. Hey, you started it. I did. No, I did. I did. I took it to that level. <laughs> you let the tiger out of the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. The tiger is most dangerous when it's backed into a corner. Yes. <laughs> and you backed me into that corner. So sorry. Lordy. Uh, mm. Jesus. Oh, that segment turned out way better than I thought it would. <laughs> yes, it did. Oh, man. Should we take a break? Uh, we can. Yeah, sure. Uh, you guys want this. not a shit, but we're going to pause it. Yeah. So uh, what's going on now is we uh, got a little off topic and distracted. Uh, we're just talking about how uh, I use uh, Grubhub adamantly. Um, in fact, uh, I got a, a pretty good rule that if I have to talk to a person to order food, there's a pretty good chance I'm not ordering from there. With the exception of like uh, Reno's because their Philly cheesesteaks are so good. Um, dude, by the way, these guys when they make their Philly cheesesteaks, um, uh, it's the standard like onions, pickles, peppers, and steak. I don't ever get peppers because I fucking hate peppers. Um, but it's a lot like they're like green peppers. I fucking hate bell pepper. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody that does it does way too much of it. Um, so the issue that uh, that has arisen is that I order takeout so often that the delivery drivers all know who I am. Uh, and I usually tip like five bucks because here's the thing, man. If you were to go to a restaurant and sit down, right, you're gonna have to tip 15% for hospitality, right? Um, that's just, if you're not a douchebag, that you do. Even if you have right, shitty right, service, you should right. still tip like 5%, right? Because mm. that's these people's livelihoods. They make like a dollar an hour, you know? But um, a delivery driver uh, gets hosed, like literally like get a dollar, $2 tip, whatever. So if you slip that person like a fiver, right, they like you. 
because fucking I get it. You have to use your own gas. You drive to this fucking place like it's a, it's, a, it's a hassle to delivery. And I feel like if more places were inclined to deliver, you could get some more dope shit to your house. Right now, I only really have three options via Grubhub, but they're very distinct options. So, like, I got Mike's Deli, which is a New York, or I'm sorry, it's a New Jersey deli. And they do, like, Taylor Ham pork roll sandwiches really and steak good. burgers really and all kinds of crazy good. shit. Man, sandwiches are great. Um, but it's a deli. It's great. But they have three drivers. And I know all of them. There's the dude who uh, pretty much just wants to get in and out, like that guy. There's the lady who knows me very well. She likes the dogs. And then there's the girl who drives, like, this super dope-ass charger. And um, she loves the little dogs. So, like, Kilby uh, is a celebrity over there. Oh. And now Loki is, too, because he's a fucking maniac. Little. Um, then uh, uh, the Domino's guy knows me by name, Wesley. And then uh, I actually... Shout out to Wesley. I've actually, uh, I got an Indian restaurant that will deliver to my house now. Um, and uh, it's like a bowl and nan is what it's called. And uh, it's super dope. Like, oh I didn't know God. I liked I'm Indian so food that much. I'm jealous that you have an Indian place that delivers to your Their house. Their curry's really good. Oh, yeah. Dude, like, uh, find an authentic they, place. They have Momo, and the Momo's all, like, it's, it's like uh, chicken Momo with, uh, like, it comes with, like, this weird curry dipping sauce. I'm it's so like jealous. an Indian what? pot sticker. That's not even um, fair. Then, uh, uh, so I, I love tandoori chicken, but they have the tandoori chicken, and then they actually make like tandoori nuggets, which is really good. They call it Chicken 65. Uh, it's pretty dope. Um, and the, every time you order one, it comes with like uh, the green cilantro lime dipping sauce deal. Um, and then uh, today I got uh, these, uh, so I got the Chicken 65, I got some Momo, and I got uh, um, these, it's like a, pita kind of but it's stuffed with potato and spices oh my and then like you get two of them so you can tear it off and like eat it with your stuff it's super good man um but those guys know who i am now (laughs) uh guys like hey it's good to see you again (laughs) like uh that's bad (laughs) that all of my delivery drivers know me but uh when i tip them five bucks they make me the first stop so now like the average time for road hub is like 60 minutes i get my shit like 35 god i can't believe that grub hub i mean is it so, 60 minutes, fuck. Well, no, 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 you gotta figure, you did an online order, right? Mm-hmm. So it takes a minute to get that, right? Somebody's mm-hmm. gotta go over there and get it. And then they gotta make the food, and then they gotta deliver it. So, like, if you were to call it in, it takes like 30, 40 minutes anyway. So extra 20 minutes, because it's online, yeah. right? So, um, what uh, what I really like about it, though, is like, because I can get, um, I can get Bolin in, I can get Mike's Deli. I got this place called Mimi's Pizza that does authentic New York style pizza. Dude, their shit's so good. It's that dope. shit is lit. Oh my god, I, I'm so jealous. I was so excited when that pizza popped up in my door because I was like, you know what, let's try it. Let's find out if it's really New York pizza. Mm-hmm. And when I rolled up and I opened the thing, I was like, oh, it's really New York pizza. And I tasted it and was like, oh, it's so <laughs> good. Because I'm from Jersey, so like, like pizza down here is kind of trash. I mean, I'll eat it. Like, it's yeah, it's decent, but, but like, there's a yeah. significant... I, mean, I used to be the, the biggest guy who's like, there's no difference. It's, it's just pizza. No, no, it's not. There's a difference in New York pizza. Well, that's the big there's thing here, too. There's a difference. So everybody knows about New York pizza, but a lot of people don't know about Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, no, they don't. And I'll tell you this. What, what? <laughs> if, if I find another place, because I try Philly cheesesteaks everywhere, because I like to find the ones... Only, that, like... What, what, <clears throat> went to Jersey Mike's today and like I saw somebody get a Philly cheesesteak from there and it's Jersey Mike's famous Philly. I was like, that's not Philly cheesesteak. So there's a couple of different variations of chili feed, uh, or Philly cheesesteak. And so there's the classic, right? Which yep. is essentially chopped steak, onions, and cheese whiz, right? It's like the processed cheese that comes out of the can. Like it's a Philly. That's a Philly cheesesteak. That's the original, the original Philly, Philly cheesesteak. Cheese and then that changed a little bit, and then people they replaced the cheese with provolone. Of, yeah, provolone. Which provolone is good. That's the one that most people know. Yeah. Um, and then the, the condiments to it are onions, peppers, mushrooms, that kind of thing. Um, and then di- different places will differ. stuff. the best cheesesteak I've ever had, and I've actually had a Philly cheesesteak from, I forget the name of the restaurant, but there's like two competing restaurants. Like, we were that fat was, asses. That was in Philly. Yeah. Uh, they were right across the street from each other. I actually was a fat ass and ate one at each the same day. Uh, yeah. And they were amazing, yeah. right? But the best cheesesteak I ever had was from this place called Rockies in Florida. And the guy's from Philly, right? And it was 
bar none, the best cheesesteak. steak. There's like the right amount of cheese in it. Sometimes people don't put enough cheese in the cheesesteak, and it's just pretty much chopped steak, right? Um, but uh, this place is just, I can't even describe it. Like every time I get a chance to go there, I have to eat there because the cheesesteak's that good. Here, my favorite place to get a cheesesteak is uh, Reno's because they chop up like fucking pepperoni in it. And then they add, like, yeah, it's, it's, you don't it's think really, about it, but yeah. it gives a different taste and texture to it. Exactly. It's super good. Um, but there's a problem I have with North Carolina and their Philly cheesesteaks. One. Problem one. If you put mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato That's on not my, a Philly cheesesteak, bro. That's, Philly cheese steak. Steak. that's not a fucking yeah. Philly cheesesteak. Stop making that. I'm that's sorry. But it's not. That's it's not. Mike says, though, right? It's not. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. It's if you put that Philly shit on my sandwich, steak. I'm going to come to your establishment, I'm going to beat up your wife, and burn down your, your <laughs> restaurant because fuck That's you. not a fucking Philly fuck cheese you. Did I tell y'all? Fuck I worked, you to death. I worked at Jersey Mike's for like two weeks. <laughs> like, like this is when I was still part-time at, at the job I'm at now. And I was like, well, why not? It'll be fun. It'll be fun. And then, I mean, granted, I wasn't even appalled by what they were doing in the Philly cheesesteaks. But just in general, I was like, meh. You know, it's not a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's not a Philly cheesesteak. I guess a Philly cheesesteak yeah. is an icon. And here's the thing: and you're like you can shitting have, on that icon. You can have a serviceable steak. So a, a serviceable cheesesteak is like when I order from Mike's Deli. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not the greatest, but it'll do. Mm-hmm. Philly cheesesteak meat, onions and mushrooms, mushrooms. Mm-hmm. maybe put some peppers. You can pick the cheese you want to put on there. Peppers. Those maybe so some sometimes peppers. I'll do cheddar cheese because. Mm-hmm. I, I like sharp cheddar, yeah. um, but most of the time I do provolone extra cheese, and it and it's not great, but it's good. Um, here's the other big travesty that I have. The probably the thing that pisses me off more than lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. So a lot of restaurants down here put some sort of weird fucking sauce <laughs> in the cheesesteak, right? It's like a. Thousand Island? No, 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 no. It's like a jus of sorts. Like it's like a, it's like a au jus. beef. Au jus. It's not really au jus, mm-hmm. but it's slimier than that. Because au jus yeah. is just essentially, if you never knew what au jus was, like when you bake the roast, right, mm-hmm. and then you cut it up to put it in there, you take the drippings from the roast, and then you make a sauce out of it, right? And it's super thin, and you dip it in it. It's essentially just beef sauce, mm-hmm. right? And that's what au jus is. It's not au jus, but it's kind of like it. It's slimier though. It tastes like butthole it is the worst <laughs> i would rather eat a plain piece of bread with bologna and cheese like pre-processed craft single than put that foul shit in my mouth like the fact that you call it a philly cheesesteak and then put that it's ridiculous sauce in there and then you call it something it's else a, it's, it's like a cheesesteak no it's like a french dip or something no 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 no, no. no that's a, a separate thing you know what I'm yeah about? it's like a separate a french thing. dip is a french dip it's roast swiss cheese yeah. pickles and then you dip the fucking yeah. 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 yeah um it's not it's like when i say au jus it's, it's are, you, are, you, are you saying that they're defiling a a philly cheesesteak by dipping it in so, some kind of meat remember sauce? Remember that uh, restaurant that I like to order from in Greensboro all the time? Yeah. Rico's Tacos and Subs, oh, uh, the Greek restaurant. Nice. When I tell you that I, this restaurant, I can get shawarma, mm. yeah. falafel, baklava, spaghetti and meatballs, Shut pizza, up. a Philly cheesesteak, tacos, gyro. lamb gyros. Um, lamb gyros. Like oh, good, good, from the same good place. Lamb gyros. Traditionally, All the Mediterranean. Like, traditionally, I get three chicken tacos and a lamb gyro, and I give one taco away because I try to try to spread the love. Because like, if I like a place, I want to be successful and keep doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ignorance is bliss with that because I've never had a dude from the same country deliver my food there, and I mean like it's not like like oh I'm being racist. It's Hispanic dudes or whatever. I'm gonna cash in my white privilege right there. Cha-ching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um it's like. An Eritrean dude shows up with the food, or it's like, you know, an Iranian <laughs> guy shows up with the right. food. Or like, yeah. like, 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 whoever owns that restaurant has like the United Nations of delivery guys. <laughs> like, it must be the most either either the worst place to work or the most harmonious. Like, we are the world. <laughs> we are the people. Me not black nation. <laughs> Me not black nation. But the food is dope. It's super it's good. Super good. But it's on West Market Street, and ignorance is bliss. I'm not driving out there. No, no, no. I don't ever want to see it because I assume it's filthy as shit. But if it tastes I don't right, have to. I don't have right. to look at it, which right. means ignorance is bliss. Because as right. a former pest control guy, I know. 
<laughs> but I don't know for sure, sure right now. And that ignorance is keeping me right there. Like I was ordering from the Chinese joint up the street. One day, what we need know. to do is, is like, 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 let's say a weekday we're off or something. Run up there, during, run up to downtown Greensboro during lunch and hit the lunch trucks. So, oh, shit, I was a construction worker for amazing. a long time, and I ate out of a lunch truck for like three years. When I say never again, unless it's called Taco Bus, never again, I mean never again. I don't lunch what truck. Was, what was Taco Bus? Tell us about Taco, Taco Bus. Bus. Taco Bus is the single greatest thing ever. It is a bus that parks and serves tacos. So, describe, so, so, have you had, like, other food truck tacos? Like, what is that experience? No, I just, like, but the thing about it is that, um, I've seen the inside of enough food trucks to know that the the maintenance on them is not great Mm -hmm. and because they can't be pinned down they're not held to the same like health standards standards. yeah so a lot of those things and here's the thing if you have a moving vehicle that has roaches you have a huge problem oh my god and so a lot of those trucks you get the front facing thing but you never see the grill and you never see like the staff looks kind of grimy most of the time that's because it is now that's not all food trucks and food trucks right now are taking off because they're trendy you yeah. know like you know, oh that's this place to play but there's also another thing too is that they have limited supply and stuff like that mm-hmm. so something that can't be pinned down by a health inspector i don't really want to eat at and i ate from a lot of sketch food trucks you know because that was the only option we had at the time and i just i spent enough time in a portal to know that i never want to have that experience <laughs> again so like, dude, a portalet in the middle of August in Florida after you ate a sketch hamburger. Bitch, that sounds. That is literally hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like 120 degrees in that thing, and you're having diarrhea. You're just dying. You're dying. Your soul is dying. Everything's dehydrated. And everybody's waiting on you because they all ate from the same fucking truck. And here's wow. the here's how I learned what to tell. Because in Florida, a lot of the food food trucks are run by Hispanics. Um, you have to be very careful and you have to watch this. The trucks where none of the Hispanics go to never eat there. If there's a bunch of Hispanics crowded around one truck, that's the truck. Interesting. Right? So you have to watch them and see where they so, go first. So it's like the people that run the truck, the same kind of people that congregate around the truck to eat. Like those, they know more. They, they work those sites way more than you do. Mm. Right? Because a lot of those guys, they'll, they'll hit the same developments, they'll hit the same spots, the same crews. Like, because, like, if I was in, like, let's say, in Florida, like in one place, and I went 20 miles away, I would probably see the same guys doing stucco, right? Like, like the same three crews. Um, and you get to know those guys. Like, you don't, you're never really friendly with them, but you've learned to like watch them and stuff. So, uh, one of the things you can do too is uh, you can uh, uh, walk over to a job site and find the guy who speaks English, right? Like, hey man, I just have a question. That's gonna sound really weird. I'll get your lunch today. If you show me which truck to eat at, man, I got you. Like, show me the best one. Show me the best tasting, best like cleanest food, the one that doesn't give you any stomach problems. I'm like, I got you, dude. Um, and just buy that guy lunch, and then you get a like. And so, like, what That's ended up really happening is like a couple of months down the road, you see the same guy. You'll see him nod over to a different truck, or you'll see a white guys walk up the truck. You'll be like, shake his head, no. Like, all right, bro, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is wild. So I just I don't I don't food truck and it's 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 not because here's the thing you watch enough Food Network you think every food truck's like that clean serving good food like artisan craft um, and I have something else I want to talk about too that's uh, something I got brought up in um, uh, cultural appropriation in restaurants <laughs> you haven't heard about it yet so in Oregon of course Quincy hasn't heard about it. in Oregon there's this big thing going on right now yeah, yeah. where uh, there's a list of Mm -hmm. white-owned restaurants that sell ethnic food, Mm -hmm. right? So, like, here's the thing. There was a counter-article that came out, too, from the chefs. So, essentially, this this list says, don't eat at these establishments because they're white people who gentrify their food. Right, who own them. They've appropriated the culture. They've appropriated... And the the quote, direct quote was, cultivated for white palates, right? So, my instinctive response was, oh, how dare they actually make food to... uh, to, to their crowd, to the people that are eating at the restaurants. How dare they do that, right? How dare they find a way to make their food more enjoyable to their clientele and sell more product? To the, right, right, right. It's like a profit perspective, here's, yeah. Here's the thing. Anybody ever worked at a restaurant? No. Okay. I'm saying haven't, other than Jersey Mike's for two weeks. That's what I did when I was in high school. Like, I worked at a restaurant. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. Nobody cares. Chefs, nobody cares what race you are. So, like, when you go over to Japan and you want to learn about sushi, 
The sushi chef doesn't care that you're Japanese, right? He's going to treat you exactly the same as anybody else because he wants you to make the food correctly, right? And if, uh, like, and then they did this counter article because the guy was like, like, instead of eating at this restaurant, here's a minority owned restaurant that serves that food nearby. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Like, I'm, I'm all yeah, for yeah, that, you know, yeah. whatever. But, like, here's the thing I don't get the blatant racism that comes with that. Like, uh, like, I guess uh, they had a Black Lives Matter lady. He, she didn't represent Black Lives Matter. Yeah, she yeah. was on, on Tucker Carlson's show. And it's the one time I've ever agreed with that guy. And Fascinating. Which, which was weird. Like, right, I right, found right, myself yeah. in a very weird spot because I really disliked Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. um, what he's talking to was like, they had this event where no white people were allowed. He's like, as a group, like, you don't speak for that group. She's like, I speak for myself. He's like, okay, great, because, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue was is that, like, how can you say that you're against typecasting people and excluding them because of the color of their skin and exclude people because of the color of their skin? And her response was, well, when you, you, some places don't allow children, he's like, that's not even remotely the same. Oh, God, that's a horrible comparison. And so for me, real for me, and cashing in my white privilege again, I'm just like, I kind of don't care who sues them. It's, if it's good food, it's good food. So they did this article in, in response to it where they talked to three chefs who were mm -hmm. minorities and one white chef. The white chef was like, I don't know. I just train with who I train with, and I cook the food I cook the best. You know, I just make food because I like making food. Um, I never really even thought about it as yeah. being like cultural appropriation. And then uh, uh, the the minority chefs were like, "Yeah, we don't really care either." Like, like one guy was a Hispanic guy, and he's like, uh, "I actually trained in Asia for a long time, and none of the Asian chefs I ever trained with cared that I was Hispanic. You know, and now I make an Asian Hispanic cultural fusion foods." And it's super successful. And you know what? Maybe I did change it a little bit to beat my clientele. You know, is that cultural appropriation? I don't really feel that it is. I mean, if I'm trying to honor well, the heritage of that food and make it my own. Especially, the, yeah, that, that's where, like, the whole make it your own thing. This and whole thing sounds like a fucking clusterfuck. No, I, I know. You, you would think that, though. Quincy, because you're so far right. But the whole thing is. No, no, no. no. No, 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 no,
him a multi-billionaire. I do. Um, the issue that I have is I've never seen a father do more damage to his son's reputation before he ever took NBA shot one. Exactly. Than Le- than Levar Ball. Well, I just I I the guy is he's he's not likable. Right. Out of fucking control. And I really I would really like to see his kid actually hit the court and be successful before he started to tell like Nike was going to offer them a deal, but he didn't want the deal. He wanted to be partners. He wanted Nike to endorse the baller brand. Right, and he wanted Nike to endorse the baller brand, baller brand for two billion dollars, and this kid has not taken a shot on the court. Do you know the work that Michael Jordan had to put in before before Jordan, before, before they were even jump up. mans? Now the ceiling Come is the roof. On. You know, well, I don't care if the ceiling's on the roof. He's still the fucking goat. <laughs> I like that. Let's he, call it. he he won he won rings before he got a shoot. No, 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 no. no. So, I mean, like seriously. But in, but in, I don't. I don't know if that's so much like a race thing as much as it is just like a parent being. Like, well, no, I was, I was saying it was a race kind of thing because well, a lot of the black community were saying, me, "Why are you not going to buy a shoe?" Let me associate this okay. to and white he's America not with the Nike, okay. which which is a white company. Let me associate this to white America real quick. Does anybody remember Joe Simpson? Yeah. As yes. a Jessica yeah. Simpson, yeah. her father. Yeah. Yep. Same concept. A guy like who's cashing a in on blatant their kid. cash grab for right, the kid, right, right. and that's what it feels like. And uh, I feel like if he wasn't the like, when he does press interviews, Lonzo's nowhere to be found. Right, it's just him. Well, not only that. Okay, you want to get this deal? Guess what? Guess who? He, guess who he worked out for today? I don't know. He worked out for the Lakers today. Lonzo. Guess what shoes he was wearing? Probably Jordans. Negative. What is he wearing? James Harden Adidas. So he's not even wearing what? his own shoe. He's not even wearing that his own boy. fucking okay, shoe. Yeah, no, no, no. So that's a, that's that's supposedly that's custom a clear, made for him. That's yes. a clear cash grab then. Right? Of course like, it's a cash grab. And here's the thing. In in an NBA today that most of the superstars who are hyper successful have some sort of shoe branding because that is the branding in which you can, like, let's say right. um, for football players, let's say it's, uh, you know, it got an endorsement on a certain product, right? It's probably going to um, be like... Headphones like like Cam right, beats or something Cam like that. has got beats, which you can't like, even wear. JJ Watt with the Bose. Yeah, JJ mm-hmm. Watt with JJ Watt um, Bose, which the NFL NFL is sponsored by. Bose. You have you have a much wider array of things that you can like kind of product pimp. Yeah. Um, you don't really see anything out of hockey, but like specific hockey gear, like hockey. brandings, like uh, Yaffa used to be a big one and stuff like that. Or um, mm-hmm. like let's say even soccer. Soccer, Adidas, Puma, Adidas, like yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But with basketball, really the only thing that you can really capitalize on as a superstar is endorsing your shoe because everybody who looks up to these guys wants to wear that premier shoe to play basketball. And the way you do that is you get hooked up with like Adidas or Nike or Reebok. Under Armour. Under, Under Armour. Yeah. I would say that Under Armour probably outranks Reebok right now. Oh, Under Armour's definitely got it. It's maybe number two. Like Nike... Defense. Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, Under Armour and Adidas are the big three. Reebok, Reebok is almost nowhere to be found. These it's days. it's really trying to cash in and hard you know, on that MMA. Well, I mean, it's not going to. And the MMA oh fucked God. up with that anyway. No, no so Dana true. White screwing over his Dana guys. Dana White fucked that up completely. The guys were making more money off of the endorsements from the other companies. Fights. Oh and the problem God. is that Reebok, with the exclusivity of the UFC, can now tell a fighter what their bonus is going to be for wearing the gear they have to wear. So a guy like John Jones can make 300 G's for that endorsement, but Joe Schmimigowski fucking fighting on the undercard is going to yeah. make 300 dollars. Whereas if he got a chance to put his own endorsements like he already had, he would have right. got on like, his gear. He would have got like 50 thousand. And he would. That's, that's how they pay for their tough. stuff. That's pretty so tough. what it does is it creates a dependency in the UFC that you need to be super successful and you need to play by UFC's rules, take fights you probably wouldn't take or take uh, opportunities you probably wouldn't. Let's say that you're in line for a title fight, now you have to fight every guy and his mother in mm-hmm. order to get that title fight because Dana White or, and Joe Silva say that mm-hmm. you're not ready for it yet. Like, that's not fair, right? Whereas, it, like, if you were a championship fighter and they say, like, oh, well, now, like, Bones Jones has to fight or Daniel Cormier has to fight Bones Jones, mm-hmm. right? Maybe he doesn't want to fight Joe Jones. Maybe, maybe he wants to fight Gustafson again, right? But he can't do that because UFC literally just says, you're going to fight who we tell you to fight or you won't get the right bonuses. Or we'll just fucking rip the title from you or something like that. Exactly what So, like, I'm noticing this big trend in, in sports where the capitalism is kind of going out of control. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think that, uh, like, coach, wrapping back to Lonzo Ball, um, seeing this guy 
Lamar going out there, or LeVar, sorry, um, going out there and doing all these press hits without the kid being there, it just, it it doesn't feel like anything but a blatant cash grab on his kid. Totally, totally. If, if he was there in at least some of them, you know, on ESPN, if he was representing him with him on ESPN, like talking to Stephen A. Smith, if he was there... Even, I would I would have a shred of belief that he wasn't trying to do a blatant crash. Even, even then, like they did a uh, they did an interview at their house, right? This is just a good example. Um, they were doing an interview at their house. Lavar took over. Lonzo was sitting on the couch, not saying a goddamn word. Now I'll put, it, this ain't about you, dog. This I'll ain't put about you. Equal blame on Lonzo though for not trying to force his way into that conversation. Oh, you know, me too. I mean, like, I mean, like, at some point you got to grow a pair of nuts because you getting ready to make more bank and tell your dad to shut the fuck up. Here's the thing: as a casual sports fan, I couldn't tell you the son's name, but I knew exactly who Levar Ball was. Yeah, exactly. I know who he is. I just kid's name Lonzo Ball. Yeah, and <laughs> I like the that they're trying to, to press so hard on the uh, the youngest kid. Uh, like an AAU basketball, oh, he's so trash. trash. <laughs> he's like taking like oh all the shots. His, I thought his field goal percentage was like something like ten percent. Well, not just game. that, dude. They they went and played this AAU game and they got home fifty on. And like the kids are like, yeah, how are you going to be on that team? Like you know what's going on is so the dad goes and finds some guys who play with him. Right, you got to give my kid the ball, whatever, because he's the coach of the team. Right, and right, like right. like it's just like as a kid on that team, like fuck, fuck, I hate this guy. Like, <laughs> this fuck face. Yeah. Here's the thing. He's so trash. Like, not I, he could probably get cut from a college team right now. Like, that's bad. He's only a, uh, I think he was like a sophomore or something like that. They all want to go to UCLA though. Well, anyway, I mean, that's UCLA is putting that. That's what, that's what I mean. Then. I mean, like, a pretty I'm good not, program together. I'm not, I'm not buying this shoe just because that motherfucker's black. I'm not buying that fucking shoe because it's five hundred. And that's a dollars. shitty card to play to. Exactly. It's four hundred ninety five. Well, either way, it's five hundred dollars with tax. How about oh, that? Yeah. Man got oh yeah. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> you I know. know what I'm saying? <laughs> And like, like, there's people come up and like, if you do, if you support black people, you buy this shoe. Be like, no, motherfucker, no, that's motherfucker, capitalism. That's capitalism. He wants five hundred dollars for that busted shoe. That shoe's <laughs> probably so trash. Probably made the in some Geo fucking Vietnamese wet. sweatshop. Like fucking some sad old ladies probably putting I mean, together their fiftieth like, pair. It's not like God, these look real shitty. It's oh, not like man, this dude. It's not like this dude great. sat in his house and built his own fucking shoe. I feel like there should be a spinner on. on the side of it, like, like yeah, like a vision spinner. Like that's exactly what these look like. like I mean, what the fuck? The, 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 the fucking shoe, uh, this shoe was worth like an N one shoe. I can get this shit at Walmart, dog. Remember the Shaqs? And so, yes. <laughs> oh my God, the Shaq shoes. But here's the, the thing: Shaq shoes. is Shaq made a shoe that literally. Any kid could afford to get. Yeah. The show was at Kmart and Walmart. Else, like, yeah. anybody who else, could who go else did that? Shacks. Who else did that? Um, I think it was, was Alonzo name? Morning. No. Was it Alonzo Morning? I think it was either that or Penny Hardaway. I think no, it was Alonzo Morning. I think it was no, Alonzo. no, no, no. It wasn't Alonzo Morning. It was um, what was his name? He played for the uh, played for the Knicks for a while. Talk about Patrick Ewing. Not Patrick Ewing. Played for the Knicks. <sighs> Fuck! What was that dude's name? I don't know. I don't know where you're going with I'm, that. About, I'm about to look it up, dude. Like, Caitlin's on the, the Google machine right now. Yeah, the, do, the uh, Google machine. Do, um, look up, like, famous basketball player shoes and just start naming names, and then they'll come mm. to you. Nah, it's going to be such a yeah, ridiculous Yeah, that's, that's a really, I'm going to need you to, I, I feel well, like I'm at work really, right now. I'm going to need really, you to, like, It really scale isn't a ridiculous Google list, because you got Jordan, Barkley had a pair, Magic never had right, a pair. Think about today. Basketball. Like, everybody I mean, has a let's go. Let's go today. KD, LeBron shoes. James. I mean, it's gonna let's it's just, gonna narrow itself track. down. Trust me. Yeah, I feel like good at googling. Andrew Bogart has a shoe. <laughs> Andrew Bogart does not have a shoe. <laughs> All right, should we try fifty best signature shoes? No, before? don't do fifty best signature well, that shoes. That won't be a best. It won't be on the list. Cheapest. Cheapest. As per NBA your query players. request, Quincy. Uh, I have like a million fucking results. Great job, Quincy. Well, no, no. <laughs> you're one of. <laughs> all right. Famous basketball. All right, let's see. Let's see. NBA. Okay, NBA players who have their own signature shoes. Let's take a look. All right, so we've got. Or own the brand. How about that? Own the shoe brand. Well, I don't know if that's. I think it's too specific. It's not too specific. It's not because Jordan's really the only one that owns his own shoe brand. <laughs> it's not too specific. Trust me. What about uh, Lillard shoes? Not Damian Lillard. He's, he's Adidas. 
Right. Um, Did you see that uh, mean tweets, Jimmy Kimmel with all the back? And it's going to be an older yeah, player. It's going to be an older player. I mean, just to find the show. These players who own. My favorite their, one was. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, there we go. If the guy who voices Cookie Monster ever dies, I feel comfortable and can sleep at night that Dikembe Matembo can fill the role. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, like, the second best one was also Dikembe Matembo. It was like, I took a, I had a fart today that sounded exactly like. <laughs> was I was his naked tongue. Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come on, man. Give me a <laughs> Come okay. on, man. Right, let's, take a, let's take a look. Fuck. Quincy, this is not as easy to find as we. I feel like we're using the wrong phrases it's not, in this it's search not query, Candy. friend. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. It's not Marcus Candy. What shoes do NBA players I wear? I feel like that's it was a, a horrible of the search. Nomadic. That's that's a bad search. He, I feel was, like. he was a point guard. I can't remember that fucker. Chauncey Billups? No, not Chauncey Billups. Uh, was he? Did he ever play for Charlotte? He may have. No, no, no. The Hornets. The Hornets when they were in. Uh, what's that? The small guy. No, not Muggsy Bogues. Not Muggsy. Oh my god, in all this Google searching, uh, I came across a pop-up, that, or not a pop-up, but just like one of those Viruses. ads. Yeah, <laughs> computer aids. Uh, it was like, where's Tommy Lauren now? Have we heard from Tommy Lauren? Who's Tommy Lauren? From the fucking... No, you haven't. Oh, the fucking, the white chick with the blonde hair. Yeah. She's, uh, she's got her own, like, internet show. Um, no, 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 she's been... I don't, I mean, I'm not she sure. She still pops up. I see her all the time on my news feed from the fucking ridiculous Republicans I got on my page. <laughs> That's the difference between you. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, no, no, no. I, like I said, I sometimes I have it on the machine just to fucking hate everybody because, like, like oh, I said. Oh, no, because it's fun. Uh, it's... The left and the right wing, I find oh, both no, equally they're, deplorable. They're all fucking idiots. I like to sit in the middle like I think a woman should have a right to, uh, to control her own body. And at the same time, I feel like you should be alone again. You know what I mean? Like. Okay. Yeah, like, why the fuck not? Like, it's not, yeah. It's all about freedom, man. It's supposed to be the land of the free. They they pretty much shit on her on that one. Tell me. Well, I like that they fired fucking uh, Papa Bear. (laughs) <laughs> Bill O'Reilly like that shit was no funny. I know that shit was so good. I can't believe like with his ratings and shit like that I can't believe they fired the Messiah and then put in Tucker Carlson in his no role. I know with this stupid fucking bow ties like get lit get lit I was in Florida they so, have a show there called Bubba the Love Sponge and he does a 30 minute segment every Friday with Tucker Carlson and it's like <laughs> the worst Ugh, and I, I like hate that guy on a visceral level so I've, I've decided... The so propaganda machine that is for, Fox News. For those of you who don't know what I do, so I, I build, like, websites and shit. So I'm going to start spoofing Fox News and Breitbart and send articles to my mom that say what I want them to say. <laughs> and she's going to have no idea because they're going to be, like, perfect less... That's- that, I feel like that's a learned behavior. I feel like I directly contributed. <laughs> no, oh, no, 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 it is, it is. Because, like, and, you know, so so in learning how to build this shit, I was like, okay, these are the tools to do this. And then it was like, ah, oh, but yes, here's the malice to do it the way that I want to do it. That's so diabolical. And so, right, no, no, no. So, so this is, this is uh, no doubt Actually, as a, a result of what... Most of the time when I'm about to tag you in an <laughs> Onion post, I have to look at it to make sure you didn't post it first and you usually because, do right, it. <laughs> right, no, 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 I'm, I'm just, I'm all about some, some fake news. I'm all about some fake news. Well, like, so. sometimes I'll, like, read it and I'm like, fuck him, oh, it's the Onion. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Onion. But now we're getting to the point these days where it's like, is it the Onion? <laughs> like, we have to, like, legitimately check. Well, like, let's, let's go, let's go with that. Like, so, like, I typically... We've been trying to get away from politics on the show because right, we feel right. like we get into this drain. But since no, you're here, I feel yeah. like this would be the most appropriate time. We, we can keep it, like, ridiculous. I'll, I'll the pull absurd, the reins back on right, that. Right, the absurd is always kind of if fun. If it starts to get too crazy. Right, right. So, uh, the POTUS. God. Uh, what about him? President Air Dumpster Fire. Fuhrer. <laughs> Fuhrer, Fuhrer Dumpster Fuhrer, Fuhrer Fire. Dumpster Fire. <laughs> Don Cachet, Fuhrer. So, like, I first of all, I uh, my immediate post when my, my when my dude got elected was uh, America, what have you done? Um, and to see a lot of the the Republican base uh, feverishly still try to defend this guy in office, who, like who it just says absolute absurdities. There it is, is. finally. What would you? Stefan fucking Marbury. All right, hold on. Damn it. Hold on, you just found it. <laughs> no, I found it. You ain't got to even look it up. It's Stephon right. Marbury. Stephon Marbury owns his own brand, just like Shaq does, right? Right. He's selling Kmart, Walmart, whatever. Nobody buys Horrible shoes. shoes. Yeah. Horrible yeah. shoes. Nobody buy. buys, and they're owned by a minority. I like it. That, that was my point. 
But the shoes are shitty. That's but why the shoes are shitty. No, 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 my cousin would always joke. Shoes. He was like, look at my Shaq shoes. He had like a million different pair, but it, it was always like the shitty shoes. But Shaq it's like shoes. made out of a memory. Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> like, it's like real garbage. And they got but, like, him, like he... Duncan on a basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, like, but the emblem jacket. always looks a little jacked, jacked, a little skewed. Well, like, yeah. that's just it. If you're in like a poor neighborhood and you can't afford nice shit, you can get you a pair of Shaqs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's Shaq. shoes. And I'd, probably the most dominant big man in the NBA. Not probably. He is. <laughs> um, so, like I was saying with the POTUS, like there's, like I've been trying to, like I've got this thing where I'm putting blinders on, where I'm just, I'm trying to stay out of any politics sure. whatsoever, sure. like for the next four years, and like it's amazing to me that we're not even done with year one yet. Like we're, we're not, not even. Close. Oh, we're not, not even like close. halfway done. With we're only year seven. One. We're only seven months in, almost six months. This is ridiculous. So January, yeah, no, no, nope, like you just started six months. Like, please fucking kill me. Like, so topic one, mm-hmm. trickle down economics mm-hmm. for the tax cuts for the wealthy, right? So in I be, I want to say it's Kansas or Nebraska, one of those two states. The governor imposed that same program, right? Right now, they're broke, like broke ass broke. Like, the, their, their Senate just repealed it because it wasn't working. Because the, the idea that if you give tax cuts to the wealthy, that, that money will trickle back down, and then it'll go down to middle class and poorer classes for jobs and stuff like that, and that would invigorate the economy. The problem with that is that the 1%, when they have money, never give up money. Just so, like, it. the idea would be that uh, you give the wealthy a tax cut, they're business owners, right? They then give their employees more money and create more jobs, which then in- invigorates. <laughs> it, 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 no, okay, good. We're all on the same page of the absurdity of this. That it invigorates like, the economy what? now because everybody has more jobs and everybody has more money. The problem is, is that if you give a tax cut to the wealthy business owners, they're not making more jobs. They're going to have the exact amount of jobs they're going to have to get the job done and make the most profit. Right, and they're not gonna fucking give more money away to the same people. And we're talking about the one percentage, right? We're talking about give a pig a pancake. And we're talking about (laughs) we're talking about the one percentage. I'm sorry, I'm going back to sports again, but we're talking about the one percentage, right? All right, for instance, um, the fucking Raiders, right? I actually support that. Oh, I know. I support the move. I support the move. Hold on, what? They're getting ready to they're getting ready to move to Las Vegas, right? Because the city won't pay for a new stadium. But didn't, but didn't it's Marshawn Lynch? Oakland. Because it's Oakland. But, but didn't Marshawn Lynch just go to them? Yes. Because, yes. Because he wanted to have his swan song in. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like I actually, oh, I no, very no. much support the move no, to Vegas. No, I was so I but was okay with him going to. I support the move to, to Vegas too because oh it's God. a fucking billionaire. I mean, like well, they don't, okay, they're yeah. not trying to that's spend fine, fucking money. Fine, but, that's oh why they're rich. God. Like I get, like the whole thing about the Oakland Raiders was that it was in Oakland. The fans are extreme, and the team is hard-nosed, tough-nosed football. Always has been. But here's the issue. You can't make that team hyper-profitable in Oakland. I'm just... Right? You'll sell a lot of apparel, but there's not a big markup on that, right? But here's my thing, though. I mean, there is a big markup on it, but there's not enough to make the business make sense. Now, if you move it to Vegas, now you have Vegas locals. There's a lot of wealthy people in Vegas. Essentially, think of it like desert L.A., right? Yeah. And then on top of that, everybody who visits Vegas can just go catch a Raiders game, like eight to eight times a year, right? And imagine the volume of business that you'll get in Vegas during Raiders games. Oh, right? Wow. People will, will literally Ubers? schedule vacations around there. Can you think of the Ubers for that shit? I like Uber it's now. brilliant, and the fact that oh. Vegas doesn't really have any sports teams right now no, it's is true. crazy. Now here's a move I don't support: the Chargers. Oh, going to LA? That's dumb. There's already teams in LA, right? You've got the the Rams, right? There. Apparently, they're playing in the same fucking they stadium. Are playing the same fucking mm. stadium. That's crazy to me, right? How is LA gonna have two teams as owners? You gotta be like, what the fuck, man? Why would yeah. as an owner, why wouldn't you want your own fucking staple city? Well, here's the thing. Um, like, I get why you would want to be in LA, but you're already tapping into a fan base that's already tapped. And the San Way Diego tight. fans, I don't like, believe right, they're right, right. Come it's there. not even just no, like, oh, not come there. right, right. It's and not. teams. And here's the thing: is that these teams are moving around to these more like prestigious locales because they hope that it's going to spike attendance. But the reason why you weren't spiking attendance before is because your team is trash. Right. right the Buccaneers right. Stadium. I was season holder, a season ticket holder for three years with the Buccaneers. My tickets were twenty six dollars a game. Wow. I paid more for parking. 
than I did to go to the actual game. That's terrible. And they were trash every year, and attendance goes down every year. Right? As far as I know, Cam Cam gave up his tickets too. He's like, I'm not going to fucking games anymore. I'm like, fuck, man, they're terrible. They're it. getting better. But here's the thing we, we can talk about this. Let's talk about the sports team, super teams. Well, let's talk about super teams. Like, who was it that made that fucking statement? Okay. Live we're by the we were talking team, about one percenters. Well, not just that. We were talking about one percentage, right? They have a beer and we're talking about yeah. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, yeah, for instance. Right, yeah. Smart move on his part. Well, no, it was a smart move. But. Let's see where that stemmed from, right? So, Kevin Durant gets drafted to the Seattle Supersonics. Right. He sees oh a billionaire. God, right? right? Oh my God. He sees a billionaire. The billionaire's like, hey, Seattle, I want a new stadium. Doesn't want to pay the renovations, none of that shit, right? He wants the city to pay for it. Like, everybody cool. who has like a stadium. Everybody who's got a stadium and has money mm-hmm. doesn't want to fucking pay for it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like, okay, you're not going to pay for it? We're going to Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is going to pay for me a stadium. I only have to pay half of it. Great. I save money. Awesome, right? So they move there. Guess what? They built a super team because they had Westbrook, Kevin Durant, and James Harden. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? This team goes to the finals. Mm-hmm. Loses. A year after that, because they lost, hey, I don't want to pay this luxury tax. Because I'm a billionaire, which is only going to cost me pennies because mm-hmm. I'm a billionaire. Mm-hmm. They get rid of Harden. Which they was universally viewed money. as a bad move. Was universally viewed as a bad move. He goes to Houston. to Rockets, right? Mm-hmm. They haven't been back to the finals since then. Yeah. Right? KD is tired of the bullshit. He wants a ring. But he's got all this influence from the same owner that's like, hey, I need to save more money. Yeah. Let me move the team. Hey, I'm going to save more money. Let's break up this team so I can save money and get cheaper players. I'm trying to get the most like, cash for my grab. Exactly. And you're in Oklahoma City, which literally has fuck all else. Exactly. <laughs> so, he's like, hey. And the Warriors are like, hey, dude, we're going to pay you this bunch of money. Guess what? We're going to pay you a bunch of money. And, and you're going to get a ring. Steph Curry. And, and Clay Thompson. And, and Draymond Green. Gross. Gross. Right? So come on over. Okay, that's yeah, like, sure, I'll sign like this contract. That's when you get NBA 2K and you fucking make your own team before you start career, like your season <laughs> mode. And like, so like all of a sudden you've got uh, LeBron James, Steph Curry, KD, and fucking... <laughs> apparently, apparently this past, uh, this past right. NBA 2K17 was illegal to use the Warriors, so I don't blame him, fuck it. <laughs> so like, here's another thing too, right? We're talking about teams moving. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, do you, have you ever seen a Tampa Bay Rays game, like no. on TV? Well, I've seen the Tampa Bay Rays on TV. Yes. Do you know what their stadium looks like? What about the Tampa Bay Rays stadium? Uh, can you say uh, is it's different? Kind of like a dome. It is a dome. Yeah, it's a dome. It is an enclosed stadium to play baseball. Uh, yeah. Oh, so that's the cool. Did that for you. Here's the cool thing, though, right? Like the stadium looks like shit, and when you walk in, it's it's. That's about as nice as an indoor stadium. I was going to say, that, that stadium looks it's gorgeous. It, it, on the outside, it looks like trash. And when you're walking through, they try to dress it up, but it's still always, like, you look at the roof, it's just fucking ugly. Right? They try right. to do as much as they can. Mm-hmm. And it's in Florida. It's hot as fuck. But the best thing about it was that you could walk into that stadium. It's 70 degrees. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Beautiful. You're around. Florida's fucking hot as shit. Mm-hmm. But here's the problem. Let's say you hit a, a home run, you crank it, right? And it hits the fucking rafters, which happens more often than you think. What happens to that ball? Just stuck up there. Out? Wait, wait, wait. It's out? Automatic. Why? Because it hit the rafters. What the fuck? Right? That's just the weirdest fucking thing, right? That's... So, that defies so the for American So for years, I'm baseball. talking about like 10 years, oh right? Oh my god. The Tampa Bay Rays, who have been not the greatest with money, you gotta remember, Joe Madden came from them, yep. right? Who just got his ring with getting a team that would spend money in Chicago, mm-hmm. right? Went to um, the Cubs, man. That was crazy. And I followed him. Like, I was a Cubs fan that year because fucking I like Joe Madden. Um, I'll always uh, begrudgingly be a St. Louis Cardinals fan because that's where I went to high school, and that's, like, the first, like, well, second baseball game I ever went to. But, the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, the, 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 when you sit in that stadium, it doesn't matter what temperature it is, it is the most beautiful, awesome thing ever. Like, there's a thing to sitting in a stadium in baseball because, like, I'm not the hugest baseball guy. Like, I don't really even like baseball. But to go to a baseball game, when you sit in those stadiums, it's like stoic. It's like historic. You can feel 
Like, it's the weirdest thing. You feel this energy and this history and all this cool shit about the baseball team in the stadium. When you sit down in this in, in fucking St. Louis' stadium, you can see the St. Louis Arch from literally anywhere. Mm. Just peering over there. And it's always got the most beautiful sunset. It's right on the river. It is the most awesome, beautiful, kick-ass thing ever. And it doesn't matter, win or lose, you had a great day in the St. Louis ball game. When you went, when I went to go see the Braves, right? I got to see oh, them. Oh, did you see them in turn, old Turner Field? I saw it when they were in the Olympic Stadium. Okay. Uh, that's when they that's had the old Turner Field. They had Tom Glavin, right, Greg yeah. Maddox. Uh, I actually got to see Glavin. David and, Justice. Oh, I'm sorry. I saw Schmoltz and I saw uh, John Rocker finish the game, right? Okay. That's when he was like at his peak. Um, uh, it was like amazing like, like yeah. just fucking mm. awesome I've been to Turner Field uh, I've been times. to the Yankee Stadium the old stadium that, that's like oh. fucking ooh, just history man um, and then you go to a Rays game and it just doesn't feel like that it just mm. feels like you're just fucking there like I saw the rocket pitch mm-hmm. I saw fucking Roger Clemens on his last few like his last few games like he was in, and like we went to that game specifically to go see the rocket I went with a Mets fan to go see the rocket, because um, I mean, when do you ever, like? He's a le- living yeah, legend. Like, what are you doing? Like, never ever going to get to yeah. see that guy. So what ends up happening is uh, uh, they were petitioning St. Petersburg, which is the other city on the other side of the bay from Tampa, right, yeah. to give them a stadium. And meanwhile, Tampa's like, "Come here, come to Tampa." So they're trying to make deals with Tampa, but Tampa's like, "Nah, I don't know. I don't want to pay for that stadium." Well, here's the thing, Ray J which is uh, Raymond James Stadium, which is where the Buccaneers play, is essentially just a parking garage that has been retrofitted as a stadium. Wow. Right? It's not It's not good stadium. The, the stadium was, like, trash. Like, the fucking... It's it exposed to the elements. And in Florida, like, that's fucking horrifying because it rains, like, three <laughs> times a day. <laughs> yeah. And it's still a thousand degrees. It's torrential degrees. downpour, yeah. It's like a fucking monsoon every time it hits. <laughs> um, but, like, right across the street from Ray J is Steinbrenner Field. That's where the, the uh, Triple A team for uh, uh, the Yankees play um, during Grapefruit League. Grapefruit League is when uh, they had the season before the season, so all the guys can warm up, they can try out their new guys, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Yankees actually, like, their, their training grounds is directly behind Ray J. So, like, you have the training facilities, right? So you can go there and see all the Yankees and shit like that on the fence, right? And then you can jump right across the street and go to Steinbrenner Field and see a lot of those guys, too. So, finally, the, the race at least comes up on the stadium. And Tampa's just like, we'll give you Steinbrenner Field. You can tear it down, build a new one. They're like, Damn. Steinbrenner Field looks amazing. It's amazing. It's fucking gorgeous, right? Damn. And they're going to put them there instead. There's just one problem is that it's Tampa in the middle of summer when you're playing baseball, right? So there's going to be so many rain delays and shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. it's just going to be horrifying. It's going to be so hot and shit like that. Um, but here's the thing I bet attendance spikes. Because Tampa's way closer than St. Petersburg, because the core of the population live mm-hmm, mm-hmm. up towards like uh, uh, North Tampa, right? Mm-hmm. And St. Petersburg from North Tampa is like a good hour drive, yeah. right? So it's just impractical to drive down that far because St. Petersburg don't go to the games. And anything south of St. Petersburg close is like fucking old people land. You're talking about like <laughs> Sarasota. Sarasota. There's a there's a town called um, I don't remember its name, but it's literally a 55 and up community, like town, like the town. Nobody who lives there is younger than 55. And they Trump's like people from around there drive in to do work, like like Taco Bell and shit like that. CVS, they drive into the town to work there. Um, so there's no but nobody's coming up to the game. So to move into that locale is smart. The only issue is is that it's gonna dip again because they'll spend zero dollars on their roster. They are always at league minimum. The only guy they have that's worth a fuck is Evan Longoria, and he only stays there because his wife likes it there. Here's the thing. From that stadium, Derek Jeter has a house on the on the cove. It's fucking almost as big as the stadium. Mm-hmm. Like, there's money in Tampa, but you've moved to the right location. You have to spend the money on the super team too. You have to get people to want to play there. Here's how you do that, right? What in Florida is unique to, to most teams, like most cities? There's no. There's no. Uh, Somebody. Yeah, it's probably the pizza. There's no. Um, uh, there's no income tax. So there's no state income tax. Right. So you can offer guys less money and keep more of it, right? Mm-hmm. And that plays into luxury tax. Um, does Vegas have an income tax? Does Nevada have a state income tax? I don't think they do. See here. Um, Google, master. <laughs> <laughs> Google that. Google that's, a, that's a good question. That is a good question. 
it is 1.17%. Uh, oh, wait. So they so. do have a state income tax? Mm hmm. Mm. So it's a modified business tax. Mm hmm. Because I know Texas does not. Do they not? No, Texas does not. That's why Dwight Howard went from the Lakers to uh, Houston because they don't have an in state oh, luxury goodness. tax. I mean, in state mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. income tax. No, you're right. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, South Dakota, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming don't have it. I will say, though, they have taxes that make up for it. So you still get taxed at the end. Well, well, like, that's, but that comes on, like, property tax or, like, sales, tax. sales taxes and but things like that. But it's not nearly, they're not taking it but out of your check. when you're talking right about, away. like, I make a million dollars on a paycheck, mm -hmm. I don't have to dip it twice. Mm -hmm. Like, I know North Carolina fucks my taxes up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The FICA asshole is all up in my booty, like, bam, have another, bam, have another, bam, have another. Like, no, usually I'm like, no, bitch, bam, salt. Bend over here, come Put salt again. on me. You bastards. So. Yeah, they hate, they hate my tax. But that's a good way to make, that's up. a good way to make people want to come. And they, these guys don't want to spend any fucking money. But then you got those owners who do spend the money, right? And they're wildly successful. Tell me, anybody could have told you before Steph Curry started went over there, if anyone on earth was a fucking Golden State Warriors fan, I fucking forgot they were a goddamn team before they started winning. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you gotta remember who they started yeah. winning with, too. I mean, it was a culmination of things. So they got Steph. Then but the I'm next saying, year they, they got, started winning. Then the next year they got Draymond. And, and they started they acquiring play. talent. And then they started acquiring talent. Then they got the coach in play, Mark Jackson, who who really put that team together. The courage just added pieces here and there. But what I'm saying is, well, was, not, not just Mark Jackson. I'm sorry. Jerry West put that team together. Let's dial it back a bit, yeah. right? What about the Miami Heat? Yeah, what about the Miami Heat? Fucking Miami mm -hmm. Heat were okay, right? And yeah. then they fucking pull LeBron down there. Well, and then they get Because they had no in-state mm -hmm. tax. <laughs> in-state uh, You made a super tax. team, though. And then everybody and their mother was a fucking Heat fan. Exactly. LeBron goes back to Cleveland, mm -hmm. right? Everybody and their mother's a fucking Cleveland fan. They pull, okay, the guy, go ahead and pull in some talent again. Fucking now everybody loves that team, right? When OKC had the had the big three, everybody was an OKC fan. Now you won't find fucking one, right? It's just like the same concept when I was living in Jersey. Everybody and their mother's a fucking Giants fan until they don't make the playoffs. And if the Jets do, every single Jets or Philly flag fly up. Oh really? Because it's all within like nearby. Everybody, if they, everybody's a Giants fan. And then if the Giants start sucking, then you start seeing those Eagles and Jets flags start flying out. That's weak. It's super weak. Well, oh, now ain't no Eagles fan. Ain't no Eagles flags flew in a while. I knew that. Ugh. <laughs> ain't no Eagles flags flew in a while. So, I don't know, man. I think that uh, I think that the, the key to to building a, a sports franchise is to get players to want to play there, and you yeah. have to spend the money to do it. We well, also need an attractive city to go to. So I, I, can, I understand why the Raiders did what they did. I don't they necessarily don't feel like that's that's true though, right? Like, yeah, you can't get anybody to go to Oakland who's worth a shit. Like, but sometimes you can, right? Um, tell me that if an attractive city with a super team, right? Who the fuck wants to live in Oklahoma City? No one. People in Oklahoma City don't want to live in Oklahoma City, <laughs> right? Fucking, uh, what's, what's another one? Um, what, another city? Okay, how about Foxborough? Who wants to fucking live there? It's like the frozen fucking tundra. Mm -hmm. It's not even Boston. It's a fucking hill. Where, where the fucking Packers play? Uh, Green Bay, yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, Green Bay, Wisconsin. It's fucking cold as shit there. <laughs> right? But if you spend the money on the talent, it will come. Yeah. Right? So, so here's the thing. Or if you create that championship pedigree, right? Like, if you know that a team's going to play play for a championship and it's got a likely chance to return, you're going to want to play there. So it's either spend money or win titles. And I feel like the only way you win titles is to get talent. So a big thing with, like, like the... The, um, the Patriots is they don't spend a lot of money on guys. And the guys who want those big paydays go bye-bye, mm -hmm. right? But then guys who want rings will show up. So tell me this. How the fuck do the Patriots get goddamn Brandon Cooks? What kind of backwards-ass bullshit is that? I don't know, man. Because he wants to win a ring. Exactly what he wants to do. And you know what? There's a pretty good chance that Tom Brady will get him one. Because he's a fucking Dracula. 
and he will never die. <laughs> no, he, doesn't doesn't age. he doesn't he age. He doesn't age. He doesn't. He's a Dracula. Giselle bit him, and now he's a Dracula. Mm. He didn't bite me. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, this, can I have a beer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Me as well. Mm. But of course. Yeah, I mean, you can give me a Bud Light, too. Um, I just feel like, like, you can name the super teams in sports right now, and they're they're always the same guys in the playoffs and playoffs contentions. Talk about hockey, right? Penguins. It's either the Blackhawks or the Pens, right? Mm -hmm. Talk Penguins. about basketball. There's we may not even we don't even need to play the fucking season to know it's going to be Cleveland and Golden State right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, football. You know the same old suspects are going to the playoffs. Patriots are going to the playoffs. Steelers are going to the playoffs. Right. The Packers are going to the playoffs. Um, Seattle. Seattle's going to the playoffs. Um, mm -hmm. God bless them. Fucking either Atlanta or Carolina. KC's <laughs> going to the playoffs usually. Yeah. Right? And the, the, the divisions in there are some are better than others, you know? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I just feel like and in, in generality, like we can talk about that the super teams are kind of controlling sports, and it's kind of killing them, to be honest. It's an oligarchy. It's killing basketball. I mean, like, if you look at the NBA playoffs, that, that was horrendous. I don't even I don't even watch them anymore, to be honest. Like, it's terrible. I gotta typically don't keep up with basketball during the year. I'm a Knicks fan, so I pretty much know that I'm not going to get in. <laughs> uh, I mean, the great white hype is fucking even... Mm. Is even fucking fed up with <laughs> New York. I fucking feel you. I've been there for the last couple of years. Of I mean, just fucking, I'm a Lakers fan, man. Uh, I forget. I think Porzingis just got shut down by like a like an Instagram model too. She's really? like, "You're hot." She's like, "Fuck you. Who are even who even are you?" Oh my uh, god, I'm, I'm Porzingis. No. Uh -huh. Um, but like, you see teams like the Knicks trying to do uh, the super teams, but they fucking bank in on the wrong shit all the time. Yeah. So they got Derrick Rose, but like, my man wears a suit to games more than he wears his actual uniform because his knees are made of felt. <laughs> I like that it wasn't knees? glass. I like that it wasn't. It's just felt. His knees are made of felt. He is Mr. Glass from Unbreakable. Oh, it's just definitely glass. If a strong gust of wind happens because somebody opened the door too fast, his fucking oh, ACL tears. What was oh. it, man? It was so funny. Somebody put up a video, and they were in like the first season. The first season, it was like the second game of the Knicks, and then he he put up a shot. He missed it. And he was running down the court, and then he tore his ACL. Nobody touched him. <laughs> I mean, just ugh. Funniest shit I've ever seen. And then, like, Amari Stoudemire was the team, was the guy on the team for a while, and they had some decent pieces around him, and they traded him all for Carmelo. I mean, like, the only good publicity uh, you guys have gotten in the last couple of years has been fucking Jeremy Lin when he went off on that tangent. And then he cashed in like yeah. he was supposed to, and like that was like universally agreed that like that was a bad choice. And my man had a couple of decent games, and fucking all of a sudden you're gonna offer him huge money, Charlotte. <laughs> Ugh. Did he? You know, he played for Houston first, and then he. Then no, he, he went to the Lakers for a while. Well, he's been everywhere now. No, he has. But uh, I don't know, man. Sports is weird. It is weird. We're on that Sports political uh, We fucking way passed by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. What about? Uh, I know what we should do. Mm -hmm. What's up? So. uh What's uh what's our favorite thing that's coming very soon? Game of Thrones. <laughs> so I uh, I feel like it's not soon. I got super drunk one night watching the first season of Hold Game of Thrones. Hold on a second. Let me stop you right there for a second. So I'm sitting in my room. I just got home from work, and Matt texted me and said, "Dude, you got to call me. I got a new Game of Thrones theory." So I, I had an epiphany. He had a fucking no. epiphany. You're going to have to hear this. This is actually, I am all It ears. makes fucking all sense, ears. though. It oh, really does. Oh, lordy. Um, okay. So I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, what could this motherfucker want to talk about Game of Thrones for right now? The season's getting ready to come out. It's uh, Right. I mean, especially what? This is mid-May, <laughs> late like, May. So I get on the phone with him. He's like, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been drinking. I've been watching the first, first season, season back, back mm. again. And he's like, man, I picked up so much shit that I didn't see before. So he just goes on this tangent for like two hours, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" He's, he actually, Matt's over here rubbing his you know, hands like, together. No, like, no, fucking. seriously, he blew my fucking mind. I mean, I'm, yeah. I was amazed. No, I, I believe you know it. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give the floor to him. And I'm just gonna let him tell him this theory. This theory is insane. Please. So, one of the things that you should do, like, okay, so I have this nickname at work. It's called KGB, right? Because <laughs> for some reason, I seem to just know everything and can predict when stuff is gonna happen. Like, let's put it this way. I took a guy on who was trying to repair his sales cred. He used to be a former supervisor. And the plan was for us to just wait and bide our time because I knew that the home theater suit was going to get fired because he was a dipshit and couldn't come to work right. Uh, and that we were just going to... We were going to bide our time and make sure he got that job. And he, he, guess what? He just got promoted to that job. Right? So, but it was planting seeds and looking into signals and reading mm -hmm. the situation, stuff mm -hmm. like that. One thing that you should do for yourself if you love Game of Thrones is go back and watch the first season you of Game of Thrones. You can't tell me twice. I'm about it. You don't even have to watch the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Just watch the first season. There are so many context clues. And here's what's amazing. The showrunners are awesome mm -hmm. because I didn't pick up on hardly any of this shit the first mm -hmm. time I watched it. It was amazing. I was so caught up in the show that it was just amazing. It was right, 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 right. But now I'm paying attention to stuff. Right, like when they're talking about Jon Snow and, and like his like being the his bastard son and, and yeah. watching Ned like React have to, to, that. to right. stifle it. Right. Right. And huh. um uh, like there's so many context clues in there that are so uh, glaringly clear. Like they're so in your face clear, like how the fuck did I not see that before? Mm. So what I did is I got uh which is bad for me because I got the bees. Um <laughs> to drink wine, right? Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I love wine. Right? Mm -hmm. I like sangria, and I like red bolds, and I like you know sweet reds and stuff like that. Um, sweet whites, stuff like that. So like sometimes I'll get on a wine kick, and I'll have to have a, like a couple bottles, like three bottles. Because mm -hmm. um, I drink like I drink, and like that's real bad for me because it's like just sugar. So um, <laughs> All the sugar! I wake up pretty wrecked the next day, like, oh, oh my. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm watching the first season, and then some things are starting to click together. So this next season, do you guys have... Any like glaring theories or things that you think are definitely going to happen? So yeah. I've learned to expect with Game of Thrones that whatever, like, like you can have your theories, you can have ideas, whatever the fuck. But like, chances are, you know, they could be stepped on. So I've I've sort of learned to not have theories. I don't know about you, Quincy. Who are your favorite characters? I don't. I don't have theories. No, I don't. No, so so it's like my I think my I just like watching the show and let the shit unfold. Right, right. Like because I've I've reached a point in the showrunners have done an excellent job of like sort of lulling us into this. Every like, season okay. is interwoven together. It's beautiful. Right, right, right. And and but then also like, hey, oh you like you know, I mean obviously this is based on George R. R. Martin's, you know, creation, but it's like, oh you like this person, Hold they're on about to, that to get thought. Yeah. Hold on to that thought, because I'm about to make it whoa. Oh, shit. So, so who has the new character? So, so, okay, I like Arya, I like Daenerys, and I like Jon Snow, generally. I'm glad that you said those three. So, yeah, mine, those are the big three, I think. Right? So, definitely mine. I mean, I'm a Stark fan, so, I mean, I got the House of Stark shirt at home and all that shit. Ballin'. Fucking Arya. Arya's my number one. Dude, she's so good. She's a fucking badass. God, she's she so is good. the shit. God, she's so cool. She's, she, I like Sansa too. That I, chick, Sansa's grown on me, but anyway, that's beside the point. I, I hate Sansa. I don't like Sansa. No, 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 Sansa got really cool last season. I mean, she's ruthless. I mean, she's grown into that ruthless character. She got character. real, yeah, it was and good. And Jon Snow. Those are the two characters I like to follow. Those are two storylines I like to follow. So, Arya Period. and Jon for you? Arya and Jon. Mm -hmm. So, everybody knows I'm a guy who appreciates a villain. Mm -hmm. like, oh, for yes. me, I feel like anybody could be a good guy. Oh, no. But Here we go with the fucking Iron Throne. Despicable. Or, or fucking Salt Throne. Oh, man. You are so far off. You're not even close. <laughs> You're not even close. Um, what about... <sighs> I'm going to get Let there. him speak. Oh, <laughs> so You'll um, figure it out. Let him speak. So, my favorite character is the characters that truly make you want to hate them. Originally, my favorite character was Ramsey Bolton because oh, we he, was, know. he was such a bastard. And, like, you just can't help it. Like, I fucking hate that guy. But, he was but think about this. That guy made you fucking hate him. Yeah. But he was right? awesome. It was part the actor, part the writing. It was a beautiful culmination of the character. That was an excellent acting job. Like, I truly love that bastard. Bastard. I see you've returned my wife to me, Boston. <laughs> oh um, my god. And because, he's, because, so he, because his father gave him his name, you can see that such contempt as he tell Jon Snow mm. he's a bastard, right? Mm -hmm. um, my second favorite character is Cersei. 
Oh, because she's had her finger on the pulse from the start, and she knows so she's, what's up. She's been gunning for that throne since day too. one, God and she damn, knew she what her fate was gonna be. Oh yeah, and she has gone through so much turmoil and stuff like that to get to where she is. I'm sorry, it's amazing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Tyrion would be my third. Okay. I like Mr. Tyrion. Tyrion would be my third. I mean, yeah, Tyrion's but, easy guy to like. Though. Yeah. A lot of people oh, yeah. say Tyrion. And I like a little bit of some Jamie Lannister in there. But that's, that's the issue, too. You you start unfolding, and I'm like, fuck, I like all of My these My third favorite character... Not, I don't like them all. It's the Hound. I like all of them. Oh, the Hound. The Hound's legit. The Hound Sandra is such Plagain. a... The Hound is such a tortured, unique, I love that, man. genuine character. Yours? Like, <laughs> I'm glad that you know that, yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite Nar? scenes with the Hound. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes I'm with the Hound is when he's far from the Hound. Nobody ever knows what the fuck I'm talking about when I do that. Love him. <laughs> when he fought Brienne, that was one of my favorite scenes. Oh my scenes. god! I I'm so glad right. she won. But then that, when right, he popped right, back right, up right. in the fucking, I was like, oh. He was like, yes, yes, we get all the things. The yes, hound we, has returned. We can have you nice die things. Like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude. So, oh my god. I will start to unfold my theory and feel free to interject whenever you want. I am real. Hold on. I, I'm like, I thoroughly can, love can that two-hour conversation. May I please say that every theory you've ever had about Game of Thrones mm-hmm. has most. Not all. Most. Most of them. A lot of them. Most like, of them have I, been I feel like on. I feel like every single one I've heard has been 100% wonderful. So let's proceed. I have a skill that I use for working. He's a wizard. That I feel like when, you, when you're trying to come up with a theory or you're trying to find the truth out on something, you have to be extremely perceptive. And then you have to manipulate those perceptions to fit a theory. Right, mm-hmm. and a theory has to sound and be genuine. Mm-hmm. Like it can't just be off the wall. Like you can't take any left turns. It has to have a root in fact, Absolutely. right? And so that's how most of the time. A lot of times I'm guessing, but my guesses are pretty much spot on because I'm super perceptive. And a lot of like like one of the things that I did like when I was training you and Tyler, right, mm-hmm. for that thing, I told you exactly what you did in your day. You had no idea that I had any idea what you did. Like to the to the habits, to when you took your break, to what you ate on your break, to what you did when your floor went, to when you were slacking off, and what you were doing when you did it. I'm like I, that's to the level of perception that you have to have. You're being watched, Queen. I am a sociopath. <laughs> and I'm a total sociopath, and the beautiful part about that is that I can use that to my advantage, right? In, in making Game of Thrones predictions, namely Game of Thrones predictions, <laughs> are my favorite place to turn right now. So let's start off with a quote. From George R. R. Martin himself, and it will make sense in a second. He says the ending of Game of Thrones will be bittersweet. None of that surprises me, but for him to like reinforce that idea is like, ooh. Here's another quote that I need you to pay attention to before I get started. He also said that villains are just the heroes of the other oh, side. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> she knows where much go with it. But 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 you haven't heard the whole there thing. There is so much more to this. Right. Oh no, no, we've all heard the okay. quotes before. So where are we at? Where are we at Game of Thrones now? Where is where is everything set so, off? Okay, at? so Cersei has just uh taken the well, so she she sits at King's she Landing. Is on she's on the, the Iron, Iron throne. throne, technically, right? Because she's Yas Queen. Yas Queen. Yas Queen with her like <laughs> badass queen. like black outfit. And what and I would say is maybe so the most badass episode. Like I thought that the Battle of the Bastards was the coolest episode ever, and then that last episode Surprise, was so fire. No, when she used Literally, the dragon fire. When she used that fire. Dragon fire. When she homegirl set off an atomic bomb in fucking seven games. What the. Fuck? In in the fucking <laughs> with the the little chapel, what's it called? The scepter. She's Trump and Sam Jones, bro. She, she dropped the like, like, fucking oh, Moab. Fuck <laughs> a bell lit, fucking flew out and crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. hey, that's unlucky. Oh god. Oh shit. <laughs> Who else is happening? Okay, so we've got so we've got Sansa, we've got Arya, we've got John all congregating at Winterfell once more. We've got the White Walkers. Arya's not there yet. Well, well all right, we know she's gonna be there. She's going to be there, but right. she's not there yet. So, so, okay, we have the Starks assumingly moving back to Winterfell. We've got the White Walkers pressing, uh, making their way downtown, moving fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, actually. Making my way downtown, moving fast, really fast, fast, and I come down. down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get through and so we have, of course, Daenerys with her dragons, and I can't remember where the she unsullied, is. The unsullied, and the Yeah, she's, and she's 
the uh, fucking uh, she's commanding the sand she's commanding a few sand different snakes. armies army got, born. And with her fucking dragon. The Iron Islands coming with her. With I forgot to say the spider. Oh my god! 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 Sorry, I just had like this remembering. Uh, okay, so there's this whole there's this whole thing too where what's her name from the Iron Islands, Theon's sister, Yara, Daenerys, and it was like oh yeah yeah like get it get it. Like, so you might actually you like mean, this theory. Oh god, please have a good theory. So um. So we can agree that the north is closing in, yeah. the south is closing in, you have Daenerys, the army of Dorne, the Unsullied, and the Dothraki, and she left the second sons at home. Uh, an argument I won with Quincy last time. Yes, she did. Uh, it was the sons of the harpy. Um, then from the north, you have Sansa and Jon, mm-hmm. you the houses of the north coming down, mm-hmm. king of the north, right? The king in the north. So let's start, let's start easy and we'll ramp into it on a race car. Oh I'm so excited for this. Oh. So let's uh Cersei. let's talk about Cersei, right? Let's talk about Cersei. And by proxy, let's talk about the guy you mentioned earlier, Euron Greyjoy from yeah. the Iron Islands. Yep. What was his plan? I'm gonna go kill my cousins. After that. Nephews. Niece and nephew. Is his nephew? Niece and nephew. Where are my niece and nephew? Let's go murder them. <laughs> that's right. I that's love right. that guy. Hardcore. He's fucking crazy. Uh, and he has his own fleet and his ship oh, is just called Silence. So so they were going to, I think, was he going to roll up to King's Landing and be, no, no, no. He was, he was going to go meet up with Daenerys and be like, yo. He was supposed this to is... chase. He was supposed to go meet up with Daenerys and yeah. do what uh, Reek and uh, Yorah did. What, what was his plan, though? That wasn't his plan at all. Well, his plan was definitely to marry her. He was going to offer meet. his Big cock. Yes. Was direct words. Sorry. That's right. No, that's right. So. No, that's right. <laughs> so what he was gonna do is he was gonna align with who he thought was gonna be the queen, so he could be the king, right. most likely murder her and become the king of the Iron Throne, which made him the king of the Seven Sea uh, Kingdoms. Oh God, Daenerys is gonna die. So, so let me let me do this. If he if Yara and Theon made it to the uh, made it to Daenerys first. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Fuck. Wait, okay, go on. Sorry. If Yara and Theon made it to Daenerys first, and now that option is off the table, what other option is available? Who Cersei. doesn't have a hun- husband? Cersei. Who Cersei. Also, who also doesn't have a navy? Cersei. Cersei. So where would Theon take his thousand ships? To fucking King's Landing. King's Landing. Son of a to bitch. marry. Cersei Lannister. <laughs> that couple, though. And join, oh my God. And join oh my houses God. Lannister and, and Greyjoy and of make all, a super pack. Of all the fucking houses, though. I mean, you say it now and you're like, okay, and yeah, they're... And a team right. of lunatics. Right. right? A team right. that would burn King's Landing to the ground mm. sooner than see it lost. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I want you to, to, to put a couple of facts together. <laughs> Remember the wildfire caches? I do. What do they say about them? Uh, I can't, mm. Aegon Targaryen literally had wildfire caches all throughout all the city. over the city. Yeah. How many wildfire caches did they blow up to kill the Sparrow? Uh, I feel like it was like one central... Two. Well, it was, okay, yeah, it was just like one it's little centralized two. node of them, right? Like Two. It's okay. So that means every other cache of wildfire it's is still, still, still available. Oh, now, so remember much. some of the previews. Remember... Daenerys when she was with the uh, the sorcerers yeah, and they gave her the thing and she was walking up to the Iron Throne but it was all shambles and burnt to the yep. fucking ground. Oh, son of a bitch. So, here is where the theory is going to start to ramp up. So, Euron Greyjoy will go to Cersei Lannister and they will marry because he brings something she needs. Right. Naval fleet. Right. And she has something he wants. Kingdom. Mm-hmm. But he will be her servant, which will create what? Because she's the queen of the Iron Islands. Or she's the oh, queen, she's she's the the queen of, of the Seven Kingdoms. Oh, right, right. The right? Whole, the whole and he's thing. the king of the Iron Islands, right? Mm-hmm. But what is he not? He's not blood? I mean, well, He's no, not he's... the king okay. of the Seven Kingdoms because Cersei would never let him be king over her. So, so okay, but technically he would have the title of king, right? And marrying her, he would be you king. You haven't the theory I'm about to but... come up with. Is it a new theory? Yeah, there's an, an additional theory to this. Okay. And I, you're going right, to recognize right. it because like I said that originally so, so Arya she, was going to do this. So she's going to okay. be in charge. Clearly, because right, she right, would right. never let him control right. her like that. Right. And, and the character would never allow that. Right. So 
now she's got a husband, but there's one major problem in that. What is it? She has no heir. Yeah, no, like... not an heir. What is the major factor to, 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 to Cersei having a husband? Well, so neither of them technically have a right to the throne? Jamie Lannister. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh, 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 the fuck. Kingslayer. <laughs> Could oh, you okay. imagine Jamie would be okay with Euron? No. no. God, no. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> no. So here's a fact that I know. I know that Euron takes silence and actually boards and kills Theon this season. Right? Theon's ship gets taken over and he kills Theon. I know this. Why would you spoil this? You fuck. I know this. I know this. Bitch, what the? Well, here's the thing. You can you can tell it from the preview. No, no, just from the preview. No, 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 no. no. A man has no dick. He's trying to die. All right. It's not a. It's not a. A man has no dick. And why are you calling Theon? That's Reek, motherfucker. No, that's Theon. It's Theon now. Fuck that. That's Reek. No, come on. It's pork sausage. It's pork sausage. It's Reek. (laughs) Reek. I send that like gift. I send that gift to Mike Den like fucking like once a month. <laughs> are you so, are you so, loyal so, to so, me, so, so, so you're saying Euron is going to overtake Theon? <laughs> like they like they they're going to have a rough going in there. Town, like they'll town. they'll end up getting poor, poor fucking Reek too to be killed by his own uncle. Thank you, thank I you. I appreciate that. Oh fuck! We call him. <laughs> Daenerys. Daenerys will win the day. Well, she will. Win. Right. Really? They'll go take the they'll take the Duff Racky to Castle Rock, Castle okay. Rock, right? Okay, okay. And they'll win, the Rocky, uh-huh. the fucking, right? Uh, well, the her whole, the, uh, her whole fucking unsullied. Then they'll win. Uh, the unsullied will come to King's Landing, right? And you'll have this big. Well, that might not be accurate, but like you'll have these big out battles, right? And so because they're about to lose the city, what does Cersei do? Oh, she'll blow that motherfucker to pieces. Blows it to smithereens. Sounds but right. what's a major factor that we're missing? Where the fuck is Euron? Where the fuck is Euron? So imagine this. Is this your man? They have to create an heir, right? Yeah. Euron and Cersei? Right? They gotta make an heir to the throne. Right? She's gonna be working it. Right? So do you take uh, Euron as a gentle lover? Oh, no. no. Nah, he's gonna be rough. He's gonna be ugly about it, right? Who would take serious offense to this. Jamie. I think Jamie Lannister lives up to his name as the Kingslayer again and drives a sword directly through the back of Euron this season. But he hasn't he hasn't been a very established character in the really series and there would be no so issue getting rid of him. Like they haven't really established him as makes, a makes tremendous sense. villain yet. I'm about makes it. Sense. I'm here for it. It'll be towards the end though. Makes so now sense. the, the well, right, city right, right. is burning. So, so this is what season seven uh, yeah. ending. This is season. They're saying the second episode of this season will be the longest episode ever. They're saying the first the first episode will be the longest episode ever. They're what, talking about what a two-hour episode. Say what he said and changed. He said the first the episode. the second season. He said the or second, second episode, episode of that season will be almost two hours. Yeah. Oh, is it the second episode? The second episode. Okay. They, said. they were saying that thing is going to be like two hours. Okay. So, the, the city is burning to the ground, right? And I believe that Cersei will die this season. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's happening. And I think it's going to be by dragon. What? What did? What did? What did no. he <laughs> No. No. I think. I think. I that can't. Would, I refuse to believe that for the simple fact. I think we. That Arya whatever has happens a with this podcast, list. or whatever happens, Arya, right, so this is going to be. Arya's got a right fucking here. list. Right. So this is just a throw up. Right? Right, right. Arya's got a fucking list, and Cersei Lannister is on it. She's going to kill Cersei. Yeah, but she didn't kill half the people on her list. It doesn't matter. It does matter. No. Yeah, she's just does. getting started, dog. But she's getting started. Bruh. She's getting started. You ain't ready for this jelly. Oh, I'm ready for this jelly, dog. She didn't. So she didn't what does that do then, right? So King's Landing has been taken over, right? Daenerys now sits on the Iron Throne. What's the major problem to that? I mean... So what she- have I excluded from this theory? The North? Yeah, the, the North. North. The whole North. So it's got to work in, right? Yeah. So they're getting pinched from both sides. At the same time that Daenerys is rolling up, 
Jon Snow's coming from the north, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they're fucking brutalizing those sides. They can't defend. They're getting crushed from everywhere. That's why she blows the cities, because it's such an overwhelming force. Wildlings, Dothraki, Unsullied, dragons, fucking everything going crazy, right? And so uh, you have an issue here. Jon Snow's lineage, mm -hmm. right? So what does Jon Snow find out this season? It's pure blood. Yeah, they're like who is who is. He's the mom son of Rhaegar Targaryen. Yeah. And Lyanna Stark. Yeah. Who tells him? So who knows? I, I actually <laughs> I don't know. Who knows. Good, you know, yeah, this, one took me, this one took me a while to figure out. You know what? Oh 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 no! It's uh the fucking Onion Knight. Nope. No. Who is it? We're not telling you. Keep guessing. Uh okay. I had to, it took me forever to hold get up, it. Hold you up. want me to give her the context clues? Go ahead and give her the context clues. Please give me the context clues. So, in the first season. Oh, son of a bitch. This is where. No, I'm listen. Oh, sit down and listen. You're going to get excited. Oh, I know, I know. In the first season, Ned Stark comes to King's Landing, right? And then who follows him to tell him about the attempt on Bran's life? I, I need to rewatch this one. I can't remember. It's his wife. Caitlin Stark, right? Yeah. So, you need someone who would be in the knowledge, right? right. Who would be in the know. Who maybe trace. Oh, fucking uh, Littlefinger. Wow. Oh, God. Oh, brother. Oh, fascinating. He's known the entire time. What and he gives you the context clues with Ned Stark in the very beginning. From the moment they meet, Ned knows that he knows. Explain that. Explain. Explain that. Explain. Well, because that. I, so, I, I, so I, I'm gonna I, need to go back and watch so this first episode. So my understanding too, with so the, Ned, the first Ned's relation to like Littlefinger is that so Littlefinger loved his wife. Right. Littlefinger, he 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 feasts himself on knowledge, and I think like Ned Stark is like, okay, you know X, Y, and Z. You're into this, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Like I am removed, especially because that's like Ned Stark's you're, part, right? You're gonna miss a huge part of that. Oh my god. So who was the original suitor to Caitlyn Stark? Well, wasn't it Littlefinger? No, no, it was... He uh, was in competition with someone. Wasn't it... Fuck, I don't remember. Was it one of the target... No. No? I can't remember. It was a Stark. But it wasn't Ned. No, it was not. It was his brother. And when Littlefinger says... Thing, What's his brother's I don't name? remember. Okay, fuck. But when he says that his brother cut him down the middle, from shoulder to belly, right... His brother died. So mm -hmm. what does she do? She hooks up with the next best thing. Mm -hmm. His brother. Mm -hmm. Ned. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So there was never really a competition between the two, but you know the love that Littlefinger has for Caitlyn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where is Littlefinger now? So he's trying to get with fucking Sansa because he's a prick. And how could you create a divide between oh, Sansa no. and, and Jon Snow by saying, hey, guess what? Jon's a Targaryen. How about this? You're trying to make a case for the Iron Throne, right? Maybe you're never going to sit on it, but what can you do? Well, I mean, you can ensure that whoever's on it is either married to you or with you. On Loyal to you. Right, 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 right. So, can a bastard ever sit on the Iron Throne? No. But a Targaryen or a Stark could. Right. What a what about a Targaryen Stark? Not a bad theory, right? I think there's that's just a hiccup right. to that. Go on. He's a bastard. No, no, no. He's the best name. He's not a bastard once he finds out what his real lineage is. He has little finger. He's a Targaryen, and he's gonna tell him right by the grave of his mother. And he's gonna flip out, right? Fuck. Fuck, fuck. Oh so my what god, does he do? I'm back in Winterfell now. Oh god, what does he I do? got the worst goosebumps. Ugh. What does he do? What does who do, John? Yeah. I mean... Now he knows his name. What does he do? Uh, why would I... Would what does he, John would, always do? Would he not try to... What does John always do when somebody's trying to force something on him that he doesn't want? I mean, I guess he Wait, just hold doesn't... On. You're, you're he getting just close. He doesn't, so doesn't close, do it, but I don't know. Here's the thing. John's a Stark, but he's also a Targaryen. Right. So what does he do? What would you do if you found out that you were a 
part of a huge family. I mean, I would uh, reach out to other family members. I would reach out to the only well, other Targaryen. Right, right. That so that's what that's. I was thinking, like, why would he not reach out to Daenerys, especially with what's, all of this talk? What's about something it? that the Targaryens did? Uh, fucking interbreeding. To keep yeah, I was gonna say here. fucking fuck each other. Oh, oh, weird. Oh, that's gonna be hot though. Fuck. So I'm about it, I'm here for it. <laughs> so he meets Daenerys, right? And they make an alliance to take out Cersei, and that's kind of how it goes down, right? Are, mm-hmm. are they like brother sister? They're like cousins, right? They're technically cousins. Mm-hmm. She's Aegon's kid. Gotcha. Oh, He's Rhaegar's so kid. Aegon is Rhaegar's uh, father. Oh, that is weird. Ew, is that his aunt? Technically. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> but a power couple, right? Only there's a problem with that. That their aunt and nephew. <laughs> <laughs> when John went to the wall, what did he not want to be? A, ba- a bastard. Uh, oh, no, he didn't want to be the... Uh, he didn't want to... He didn't want the throne. He didn't want to be the Lord Commander. Yeah. No, they put it on him. Yeah, he's not good at, at taking the Right, never wanted it. He's not good at When he went to go to fight Ramsey, what did he not want? He didn't want the leadership. No, it's He true. didn't want he's, to be in he, charge. He's not good at it. He didn't want it. Yeah. When he took over and talked to Lady Mormon and all those other people oh. in the Iron Throne, and Lady they start saying, Mormon, King of the, the North, North, King of the North, King of the North, I know no king, but the, the, whose name is Stark? John Stark is my king. Mm. King of the North. King of the right? North. What does he not want to be? The king, king of the North. <laughs> he doesn't want to be the king of the North. So why the fuck would he want the Iron Throne? No, he doesn't. Theory one. Okay. Oh God. Oh God. That's just theory one. What the fuck? John Snark doesn't want the throne. Okay. Keep that in your mind, Vault. Sounds okay. Because there's two theories. Now, may I have a beer? I'm sorry. Yeah. This is so much information. It's fucking awesome. So, so now we know. Be blowing your mind yet? John doesn't want the throne, right? We know that. Cersei, Theon, and Euron are all going to die. And by proxy, you can assume Jamie dies, right? Yeah. Now, oh, I'm fairly confident Jer- Jamie will die by dragon. Who? Who? Uh, Jamie. Jamie Stark will die by dragon. Well, here's why I think that. He did an interview, right? And he said that uh, he has a feeling he'll die this season. And that it'll be in a blaze of glory. He'll die by dragon. All right. So... Loose theory, just throwing it out there. Whatever, it's not part of the whole thing. We're so, gonna have to play this like after the season's over, so we can be like, he knew all along, Matt knew all along. <laughs> I feel like we do that like every every time we have a season come around. Sure. So now, I want you to remember my quote, right from George R. R. Martin, the second Peter one. Sweet. No, the other one. The other one. Remind me again once more what it was. A villain. Is just the hero of the other side. Theory two. So. This is where it starts. Who is the penultimate villain of all of Game of Thrones? So this is weird because my knee jerk reaction would be like one of the Lannisters, but um, the White Walkers? I don't know. Okay, that's a good theory. That's right? a good theory. What if you've been watching the villain the whole time? And never knew that was the villain. Absolutely. Valid. Valid. Okay. Matter of perspective. Let's take a person who was essentially a slave. Subjugated. Forced into a marriage she didn't want. Right? Became something out of it. Became Daenerys. the breaker of chains. And fucking Daenerys right? is the villain. Conquers cities. Mm-hmm. Raises dragons. Mm-hmm. Is this huge hero. Mm-hmm. But what if she's not? Murders people all the time. Who keeps her reined in? Who changes her mind? Fucking Jorah. Thay. Or I'm sorry, Tyrion. Tyrion. Well, Tyrion now, but for multiple seasons, because she wasn't Tyrion knew her father, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Knew of her father from mm-hmm. Jaime, mm-hmm. right? The Mad King. What runs in the Targaryen bloodline? Fucking madness. Madness, mm-hmm. right? And what has she displayed every time someone's come to take hers? Something she's fought and earned. Shh, holy shit. Oh my gosh. She's fucking crazy, dude. She's fucking... Oh my god. She loses her shit and goes hardcore, right? She, she loses her shit, her goes dragons. hardcore, 
and oh, fucking oh, dude, I got some damn goosebumps. annihilates oh. her enemies. She doesn't just beat them. She it changes their religions. She changes their cultures. She takes over everything they have and makes it different. Jeez. And she makes it in her image. Right? So what does she do? She starts to collect an army. Right? Mm-hmm. Are the Sand Snakes good people? Are the people of Dorne like heroes right now? No. They're not portrayed as such. No. But they, right. The Dothraki. Mm-hmm. Have they ever been viewed in a positive light? They're bandits. Well, and they're like savages, right? Like well, that's the whole portrayal of. But Zeno they've Dothraki. never been portrayed in a positive light. Right, right, right. She's Holy taken shit. over Dothraki twice. She's Christopher Columbus, dude. Right. Holy shit. And then what does she do? She aligns herself with the Iron Islands, which twice have raged wars against the kingdom. Right, right, right. So what if? Although, 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 she and Yara would be really fucking hot. What if? The whole time, you've been looking at the villain, but didn't realize was that one. was the villain. That wouldn't surprise me. But jeez. It wouldn't surprise me. So, Daenerys Targaryen is the penultimate villain of the entire series. And the reason you didn't realize she was the villain was because she was portrayed as a hero the whole time. Because you didn't realize that a villain is just a hero of the other side. This is like a whole lesson in like fucking media portrayal and perception and oh my god. What the fuck? So she's currently running around trying to process the information. This is she's mad. She's She's just like her father. How many times has she walked into a fire or burned something to the ground and left herself in the middle of it because she just was going to fucking torch it all the shit? Mm -hmm. Right? The whole time you've been watching the ascension of a supervillain, but you rooted for her Mm -hmm. because you didn't realize you were rooting for the villain. So, let me ask you this. She loses her mind and starts waging wars and starts going crazy on the throne. Anybody going to have a problem with that? Hell yeah. What if she's not paying attention to the most imminent threat? Like what? You've already said it. The White Walkers? The White Walkers. Link the chain together. Well, what do you mean? So she's not paying attention to the most imminent threat. Right. So the White Walkers and are... Who would have a problem with her losing her shit? I mean, Tyrion. I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Like, everyone probably would have an issue with her losing Maybe. her shit. Who specifically? Say it. John Snow. John Snow. Well, that's if he. If because he, why? Okay. Because John he's, still has he's, a lineage to the wall. Well, not to mention he's like, you know, the entire her, her crux nephew. of that character is that he's trying to prepare for the imminent White Walker invasion. Uh, true, true, true. So her lack of attention to that would be like, hey, hold up, bitch! You got to pay attention to this because what the fuck? So. Tyrion's probably going to have a problem with it when she loses her mind, right? Mm-hmm. He loves her. He's, she made him the hand of the queen, mm-hmm. right? He's, his whole world has been making sure that he can climb back out of the gutter and become a good person, right? Mm. What if he finds out he's on the fucking villain side again? Well, I think Tyrion would find a way to, like... Okay, but what if he finds he that out? No, 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 right. but what if he's... So, sorry, go on with what you were saying. So, what is the next step for Tyrion, then? Do you have... Next steps for that. So, what does Tyrion tend to do? Well, he drinks and he knows things and he schemes. He's really fucking good schemes. at schemes. I like that. He's really All right, good you're at catching that. on. You're catching on a little bit. <laughs> so, what does he really want, though? That's a really good. I don't know what he really wants. I think that he wants peace. He wants an end what to conflicts. Right? He what wants to just be Tyrion. Well, Drink and know things, right? Right, right Live right, his life. Right, 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 right. But he wants to do it without war, and he wants to do it without all these terrible things that are happening in the kingdoms, right? Mm. So now Daenerys can't give him that. Who can? Who has that kind of dream? I mean, Jon Snow. Jon has that dream. John or Jon Stark, I should say. Jon Targaryen? I don't know. What is right? Pick Jon Stark. Targaryen. And now <laughs> it's known it's John that Stark he Targaryen. is a true, a real true heir to the throne. Oh, Fuck. The original heir to the throne. Oh my god, dude, I just got goosebumps. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So Tyrion 
will go to the place that he knows is the right place to call, right? So you have theory one coming back. There are two armies, and one of you now know is the villain. So you can assume the other one is the hero, right? So what do you got going on? White Walkers are coming, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some crazy shit's going down. You know that uh, House Stark is probably going to start planning against Daenerys, right? Which is probably going to be your season eight, right? So if you're talking about House Stark, who are there right now? So, so okay, it's presumed that Arya is going to come back. It's presumed. That's, that's, that's well, a big part of that. We've got Sansa and we've got Jon. You know, she's in the north, right? Yeah. She's uh, now uh, an expert assassin. She's really fucking right. God, I love her so much. Ugh. See where I'm going with this, right? Oh wait, wait. You mean Arya? Yeah, Arya, the expert assassin who went away to weird like assassin school and skinned people's faces off. A girl has no name. <laughs> girl has no name. And Than, a man has no penis. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. Um, so, who are you forgetting now? What do you mean here? You're forgetting it's about Jay Stark. <laughs> oh, oh my god, Bran. Bran? What? what does Bran do? He sees the... the he's a fucking he's, warg. Yeah. Right? He's a fucking... He's the three-eyed raven. Right? They have their own sorcerer there. Right? So, let me... Uh, so, let's say all the Starks get back together. Right? Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. Tyrion is advising them. Right? So, now... With the White Walkers coming, they need to get ready, but they have an imminent problem with Daenerys losing her mind on the throne. Right before the White Walkers hit. Mm -hmm. So, what's going to happen? If you know you're going to have to defend against this horde of, like, like fucking zombies. Zombies like, and fucking but, like, powerful stuff. fucking zombies, but... So, I think that Arya kills Daenerys. Oof. Expert assassin who went to assassin school. What? what doing her because, thing. Because it's one of Tyrion's plans, and there's another character involved in it. Who's the other character? I'm not going to get to that. So, White Walkers come, they fight, they win the day, right? Mm -hmm. So, Daenerys is dead. Jamie and Cersei are dead. Euron's dead, right? Um, who sits on the throne? I mean, probably unwillingly, but Jon, no. Why would John unwillingly sit on the throne? Because he is rightful. Oh, but Tyrion would probably be like, hey, I can take that from you. Probably not. Tyrion doesn't want to be king either. Not really. Who does then? Who, who's still left? I can't keep track. So, the ending is bittersweet. You want John on the throne, right? You want to see it end like that, right? The ending is bittersweet. What character is tortured enough is bad enough is is probably going to be one of the harshest but probably most dominant rulers of the seven kingdoms. I don't even know who's left at this point. I'm trying to think like so oh we have God, the stars. He's a huge character. The what? He's, he's a, huge. a huge character. John turns down the throne. Right. Which makes only one legitimate person to sit on the throne. Who's another target? Sansa Stark. Really? The ending is bittersweet. Well, no, no, White no. I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess I'm just trying to figure out the logic behind that. So, like, Sansa, so would she want that? Is that, like, a thing? No, that's not what she wants. What she it's wants. what, who wants? A little finger. Oh, fucking, oh, oh, no, what, come on, what the fuck, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> he's, so, he's so stupid. Caitlin, there's also a kicker. It's not on. done. Go on. You know what? It's definitely not done. You go ahead. You want me to finish it? Please. Yes. Please. Um, who's with the Brothers Without Banners? Uh, I don't even remember anymore, but oh, the fucking hound. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh shit. Okay, go on, go on, go on. I'm sorry. Okay. Who's with the Brothers Without Banners, right? Yeah. Who else is with the Brothers Without Banners? I don't this is a last name you haven't heard in a while. Go on. Baratheon. Which one? Gentry. Gentry. <gasps> oh, what the? 
Littlefinger does not make it to the throne. And the ending of Game of Thrones has Sansa Stark marrying Gentry Baratheon. And they rule the kingdoms together. Now here's here's what will really blow your mind. Go on. Who are the two houses at the beginning that had a huge bond? Uh, Baratheon and Stark. Baratheon oh my Stark. God! It comes full circle. Holy shit! I'm covering goosebumps. It comes full circle. It comes full circle. The <laughs> <laughs> blue her fucking mind, dude. The <laughs> blue her fucking oh, mind. But that's not even bittersweet, though. That seems too sweet for George R. Not if it's not if Sansa's a villain. Bittersweet. Not if she's as hard as she's gonna be. Let her be hard. Think about the things she's done in the last season. Be a she bad lied to her brother. Be she lied to her she fucking lied brother, to brother after he, she told her not to go to the Vale yeah. and seek Peter Baelish's help. Mm-hmm. And the whole time, Baelish is in her ear. You should be the queen. You should be the queen. You should be the queen, right? But John doesn't want to be the king. But he can't get to the throne with Sansa. But he can get to the throne with John Targaryen, mm-hmm. right? And if John doesn't really want it, John's probably the best option he's got to get to it. And he knows that he won't take it. So his bet is to get Sansa to marry him instead of anyone else, Mm -hmm. and then he truly gets what he wants. He's the king on top of the throne. Guess who kills Littlefinger? John? Who else is in in love with Sansa? Tyrion. Who helped Sansa get away? Uh, Theon. No. What? Earlier. Earlier. Who helped Sansa get out of the Seven Kingdoms? I literally, ha- well, I mean, Littlefinger helped her. I don't. No. Mm-hmm. Fucking spider? No. Uh, what's his name? No. Uh, I don't. I actually don't know. Gendry? No. The Hound. Oh my God! I'm such a fucking idiot. I'm not paying attention to that anymore. Okay, the hound. Okay, holy shit. Could you shit. imagine a person who would put up with less of Littlefinger's bullshit than the and hound. knows him very well than the hound? Littlefinger talks the right amount of shit to him, and he just kills him where he stands. And it would be like nothing off the hound's back. And standing next to them is the hound, and he has Gentry, Tar- or Gentry Baratheon. Who now knows he's a Baratheon? Because Littlefinger told him. Hot damn. Right? Or he found out from the spider or somebody like that, right? Oh my god. And then to make a power couple on the top of the throne, you have Sansa, who is brutal and cruel. Gentry, who will do anything she says. But beautiful at the same time. God, she's so hot. Oh my god, Sansa's so hot. Yeah. And John will just go off and be John, maybe warden of well, the Well, what about what about Arya? What about Bran? Like they're just chilling. Arya would be Arya. Yeah, they just and get. Bran to would be Bran. Let them be. Bran would probably be. Um, what's oh, the trust title? Arya is gonna kill some motherfuckers in this. What, what's the title of? Uh, so it's sorry. not the the Hand of the King. It's um because because Tyrion would be Hand of the King. What? Um. The Master Pycelle. Like what is he? Uh, I can't remember his title. Yeah, he would be that. Yeah, Bran would be that. that. That sounds about right. Holy shit. And Jan, uh, John just goes off to fight White Walkers. Well, so so that's the other thing. So does the end of the series, you know, it's like there's no real resolution for White Walkers. It's just like John goes off. Nope, I think they're closing in. I think that it's going to be imminent doom. Hmm. I think that the whole thing will show them on the throne with the White Walkers closing in to end it all. You think that's it? I think the White Walkers will cleanse the world. What about all these spin-off seasons that I keep hearing about? These these spin-off uh, shows. What Maybe. do you think? Do we? I haven't read much about them, but do we know like who it's going to be focused on? It's going to be completely produced by HBO, which I can say that um, since they took the season, it's gotten away from the literature. The right. episodes have become much better. So I wonder, though, what it's going to cover and what's going to be removed from 
the actual series to go in these spin-offs. No series. idea. Could be anything. So interesting. So, so fucking interesting. I remember when this shit started years, years, and years ago, and me and Chris Bray were the only ones that watched it on the opening night when we came to the store. I still can never forget watching that first